Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto has Madara's eyes tune in exams. Before I start, please support for more amazing content and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This is written by Kshikajin link in the description and support writer. Let's start the video. Chapter 1. Madara's grandson, Hanahagakur no Sato. The five-year-old Naruto was currently running for his life as a mob of angry villagers ran after him wielding pitchforks, torches bats and other blunt objects. At him. One mob member shouted, kill him. Another shouted, we will avenge Yandame Sama you demon brat. Naruto ran down an alleyway and managed to lose the crowd of angry civilians in an alley not far from the Hokage's office. Why do they hurt me? Naruto asks himself. What did I ever do to deserve this? Found him. He is hiding in this alley. A voice yells and the mob charges into the alley with weapons and blunt objects. Now you pay for all those you killed. You crushed my husband. I'll kill you. Then the mob then charges and starts beating the crap out of Naruto. Naruto couldn't think because of the pain. Eventually the crowd leaves a battered bruised and bleeding Naruto in the alleyway. What did I ever do to deserve this? Naruto cried to himself as he slipped into the sweet bliss of unconsciousness. After a few seconds a man with two large Venus flytrap like extensions that envelop his head and upper body, giving him a plant-like appearance. He has short green hair, yellow eyes, and that his body has two different colored halves. His left side is completely white, while the right side is almost entirely black. Madara Sama is not going to be happy about this. Black Zetsu said to his other half. You don't think he'll kill us do you? White Zetsu asked. If we hurry we can still save him for our sake I hope we aren't too late. Zetsu grabbed Naruto and took him in the folds of his cloak and sunk into the ground with Naruto. Mountain Graveyard. Madara was in his robes connected to the Jedm statue as he started coughing. I hope Zetsu makes it in time. Madara says as he coughs up some blood. I pray I can save my grandson. Just then Zetsu emerged from the ground and unconscious and bleeding Naruto slung over his shoulder. I've retrieved Naruto San Madara Sama. But based on his injuries he won't last long. He needs blood transfusions, and some of his flesh has been torn off, and his skull has suffered blunt force trauma, though it looks like something has already started to heal the damage, but whatever it is isn't strong enough to save him. Madara's eyes widened in horror and fear at the thought of losing his grandson. Place him on the table. Madara said walking over to the operating table that he once used to save Abito. Get me three vials of my blood and four vials of Hashirama's blood, as well as some of his tissue. You don't intend Black Zetsu said shocked. Yes I will save my grandson at any cost. Madara's eyes started spinning madly. Yes, Madara-sama. Zetsu ran over to the Jedm statue and grabbed a hollowed out Zetsu body, then the vials of blood Madara kept and carried them over to Naruto. All right now place the body around Naruto, and I will use a very powerful medical ninjutsu to merge the outer and inner skin layers that will stop the bleeding and heal his internal injuries. Madara scanned Naruto over and watched carefully as Zetsu placed the hollowed out body over Naruto's, and once it was complete, Madara started weaving hand signs. Ninpo. Hata ik no jutsu. Ninja art. Skin fusion jutsu. Naruto glowed a bright blue as the skin of Zetsu and Naruto's skin merged when the light died down Naruto's wounds had sealed themselves, and then Madara took out two blood bags and put Hashirama's blood in one and his own in the other, then inserted the needles into Naruto, and the blood started replacing the blood Naruto lost. And incredible the boy took in your blood and Hashirama's without a single adverse side effect. He's my grandson after all. Madara then saw a spark of all too familiar red chakra. Zetsu lift the boy's shirt. But, do it. Madara roared. Why yes, sir. Zetsu lifted up Naruto's shirt and Madara saw the hakifkin in all its glory. From what little I know of sealing jutsu this is an 8 tetragram seal, and if that chakra I saw is what I think it is, then my grandson is my pet stinch cricky. Then Abito will go after this boy in order to complete Project Tsuki no Mi. Then my path is clear. Madara looked back at Naruto's sleeping face. I must train this boy he is my legacy I won't let Abito hurt him. Just then Naruto's eyes shot open and he saw Madara and Zetsu standing over him. Ah your eyes open young one. Wh where am I? Naruto asked. Madara cha. Karama roared in fury. I fucking kill you. Ah. Naruto fell off the table in shock and fear. Wh what was that Naruto looked around frantically. Madara started laughing at his grandson's antics. That was probably the kick be yelling at me. Madara said chuckling. You see he and I don't have the greatest history together. I haven't seen you laugh like this it's actually kind of scary. Zetsu said sort of creeped out. That's because I haven't laughed like this in a long time. Madara got a sad look on his face. Not since Rika died. Who's Rika? Naruto asked his shock from Kurama's voice broken. SH she was my wife and I cared for her deeply. Madara looked at Naruto. Now I'm sure you are wondering who I am and where you are so I'll answer you. My name is Madara Cheha, and you are in my mountain hideout near the Shikmetsu no Tani. 
Valley at the end. Why am I here and why do you even care if I live or die? You ask that like I shouldn't. Madara says surprised. Because most people don't care what happens to me they'd sooner see me dead than help me. Well I'll tell you who I am to you. As I said my name is Madara Chiha and the reason I care what happens to you is because you're my grandson. Chapter 2. Madara's past. I'm your what Naruto shouted. You are my grandson, your father was my son who I thought had perished with my wife during an attempt on my life. Madara said. Who was my father? Your father's name was Minato Namakas otherwise known as the Yandame Hokage. Naruto's world collapsed around him as Madara's words fell on his ears. You're joking right? Naruto laughed a bit, but when he saw that Madara and Zetsu were silent he stopped. I'm deadly serious Naruto your father was the Yandame Hokage and my son. How did you find out you said that you thought he died? I found out thanks to Zetsu because on the day I thought he died I never found his body, I only found my wife's, so I assumed that my son lived, but I couldn't find him I searched everywhere I could to find a blonde haired boy with black eyes, but to my dismay I couldn't, but after years searching, I finally found him, but it was too late I only found out about my son 3 years ago, I'm sorry I couldn't be there for you Naruto, but now I want to spend the rest of my life the little family I have left. Madara smiled, how do I know you're telling the truth? Naruto asked suspiciously. You don't believe me? Many have tried to deceive the boy in thinking they care for him only for them to treat him like dirt. White Zetsu said, they treat him like scum the boy is now wary of everyone who he meets as they might try to hurt him. Black Zetsu continued. Show me. Do you still have the Sandames journal that I stole for you? Oh yeah. Madara said as he grabbed the journal and flipped through a few pages and found what he was looking for. A.N. Special thanks to Snake for letting me borrow this from Rise of the Lord of Foxes. It's a good story and I suggest you give it a read. They won my reinstatement, it has been several days since the sealing, and I find myself bound with a great pain in my heart, knowing that I did not perform the sealing of the Kaiubi instead of Minato. Even more so that I lack the necessary fortitude to protect his son from those who would try to harm him thinking he is the monster they all fear will come back to kill them all. They are fools plain and simple. I know that those that oppose my law will leak the information to shadows lurking beneath the surface of the village. They want an outlet for the sadness and they will use this innocent boy for it and it is the fact that I can't protect him is one of my greater failures in life. Not because I lack the will of fire I had come to embrace in my younger years but deep down in Kami help me a part of me hates the boy too, to some degree. I am ashamed of myself for thinking like that knowing that while I love the boy with every fiber of my being, a little part of the darkness that all of the village will soon feel for him is there as well. Suratobi Sandame, dear for my near failure, I saw through my crystal ball the orphanage caretaker try to strangle Naruto with her bare hands, calling him those horrible names that my law strictly forbids, and over a thing like asking for some food. Food that the bitch of a woman denied the boy apparently for three days straight, not wanting him to reach his full potential. My Anbu that I assigned to watch him don't seem to care what happens to the boy, and the crueler children will see him when he is older as a target they can prey on without repercussions. Had not for intervention of a female Chunin named Kurinai, who wanted to play with the children there that day, I would have failed to protect the boy. I punished that bitch of a caretaker accordingly and executed her for her crimes before the council could try to overrule my decision. However, word gets out and the possibility of Naruto surviving are sliming further as no one wants to help the boy out of fear of being labeled a demon lover as one newly demoted Jounin to Jenin called the boy. I nearly fail Minato and Kishina, but I will make amends for it now and show those old fools why I am called the Kami no Shinobi Siratobi Sandame. Madara glowered in rage as he read every paragraph at every word that dictated his grandson's horrible life. This doesn't even scratch the surface of Naruto's suffering he's been for five long years he lived on his own, trying to scrounge up enough food to eat a decent meal once every two days, and that was if he was lucky. He's been beaten, bruised, poisoned, burned, crucified, stabbed and all before he could even barely walk, and don't get me started on the hospital he have been there more times than most people will be in their lifetime, and the care he received there was abysmal, and that's putting it kindly if not for the fox he would be dead, all because the fucking villagers can't tell the difference between a kunai and a scroll it sealed in. Madara's look of rage contorted into a look of loathing and fury. How dare they? Madara unleashed a huge torrent of Kai Naruto fainted and Zetsu was having trouble breathing. MMMM Madara SSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSS
Madara grew a tick mark when Naruto kept bouncing. Settle down. Madara roared unleashed a tiny fraction of Kai to shut Naruto up. All right now that I have you attention it's time for me to begin your training under me. Before we begin there is something I need to tell you. What is that Madara Jiji? By the time that this exercise program is complete you will hate me, you will wish me dead, but in the end there is one thing you can't argue with. What is that? The results, when I'm done with your training you will be the most powerful shinobi of your age group. Alright Jiji what do I need to do to get started? First of I'm going to have Zetsu get you some weights, but in the meantime you and I will discuss the Sharingan as it is your birthright. What's the Sharingan? The Sharingan's abilities consist of two parts. The Eye of Insight and the Eye of Hypnotism, the first of the Sharingan's powers is being able to see chakra flow. The Sharingan itself gives color to chakra, allowing the wielder to differentiate them. They are also able to tell if a person is under a Jinjutsu, because the person's chakra flow would be irregular. The Sharingan's second most prominent ability grants the user an incredible clarity of perception, allowing them to easily recognize Jinjutsu and different forms of chakra, though not to the same extent as the Byakugan. This also allows the user to pick up on subtle details, enabling them to read lip movements. Madara explains. What do you mean? Naruto tilts his head confused. In other words you can copy hand signs, pencil movements, and see through pretty much any Jinjutsu place on you or others. Madara says dumbing it down as he remembers he's talking to someone who hadn't grown up in a chair. I've got an awesome eye technique I'm going to be Hokage for sure. Naruto says thrusting his fist in the air. Hokage. Madara's eyes widen in shock. You want to be Hokage. Why? Because that way everyone will acknowledge me for my power. Even I haven't been a cage and I know that's a stupid reason for trying to be one. Hey. Listen I'll tell you something that Hashirama told me. People don't get acknowledged because they are Hokage rather acknowledge people become Hokage. However the true definition of Hokage is someone who will lay down their lives for his comrades and will struggle on until the very end to protect his home and those who burn with the will of fire. I think I understand I promise I'll do what you ask me. Just then Zetsu walked in with some weighted clothing. I bought the weighted clothing as you asked Madara-sama, and I'm ready to begin training with Naruto-sama when you are. Excellent Zetsu good work now Naruto. Madara turned to Naruto with a sadistic smile on his face. Shall we dance? Anahagakur no Sato three days later, Tsuritobi was pacing his office worry etched deep in his withered face. Naruto where are you what has happened to you? Tsuritobi thought as he paced around the room. Just then there was a knock at the door. Enter. Saratobi said quickly hopping for news on Naruto, then an Anbu with silver spiked hair walked in. Sandame sama we've looked all over the village no one has seen hide no hair of Naruto he's not at his home, he hasn't been by Ichiraku Raymond at all, we've even used the Inuzuka clan, and his scent just vanished in an alleyway not far from your office, but that's where the trail runs cold. I'm sorry Sandame sama but I'm afraid that Naruto is gone. Inu responded. Damn. Saratobi swore, and then he punched a hole in the wall next to him. Then Saratobi started crying openly. I'm sorry Minato, Kishina I've failed you, and now Naruto has paid the price for my arrogance. Saratobi wiped his eyes and turns to Inu. Summon the council for an emergency meeting. Yes sir. Inu runs out of the room. Half an hour later the council had assembled in the council room. What is the meaning of this Saratobi? Danzo asked. I'm here in regards to one Naruto Uzumaki. Finally decided to kill the demon. One member of the civilian council asked smugly which was met with a lot happy murmuring. Just then Inu appeared behind the man and slit his throat. H he kill him. Mabuki said shocked. He was guilty of breaking an S rank law which calls for death upon breaking. Saratobi said. Inu next time send them to Ibiki and Anko rather than killing them. Yes, Sandame Sama. Inu bowed and returned to Saratobi's side. I have unfortunate news, Naruto Uzumaki has been disappeared from the village. The demon is gone. Another member of the civilian council said happily and the civilian side burst out cheering. Then Saratobi stood up and unleashed a torrent of Kai. Silence. Saratobi shouted and the civilian council looked on in horror, and the shinobi side smiled even the stoic Hiyashi, the kami no shinobi was back. Am it all to hell Saratobi what did you do? Danzo seed. I'll have to send Root out to look for the boy. We the civilian council call for an annulment of the law that you set up five years ago. Mabuki said. All in favor. One by one the members of the civilian council voted for the annulment. Then it came to Danzo everyone looked at him, and after a few minutes Danzo smirked. I, Danzo Shimura, personal advisor to the Sandame Hokage, support the annulment of the law. Danzo said then he turned to Kaharu and Hamura nodding ever so slightly. I, Hamura Mitakado, personal advisor to the Sandame Hokage, support the annulment of the law. Hamura said. I, Kaharu Yudatane, personal advisor to the Sandame Hokage, support the annulment of the law. I, Fugaku Ichiha, head of the Ichiha clan, support the annulment of the law, Fugaku said. All opposed. Mibuki said. 
I, Saratobi Hirazan, Sandame Hokijan head of the Saratobi clan, reject the annulment of the law. Saratobi said, I, Shaibi Aburam, head of the Aburam clan, reject the annulment of the law. Shaibi said, I, Shikaku Nara, head of the Nara clan, reject the annulment of the law. Shikaku said, I, Sum Inyazuka, head of the Inyazuka clan, reject the annulment of the law. Sum said, I, Inoichi Yamanaka, head of the Yamanaka clan, reject the annulment of the law. Inoichi said, I, Chmzai Akamichi, head of the Akamichi clan, reject the annulment of the law. I, Hiashi Haika, head of the Haika clan, reject the annulment of the law. In a 10 to 7 vote, the law is annulled. Danzo said, Now I, Mibuki Hiruno, call for the arrest of the Anbu Inu for murder of a member of the civilian council. Denied. Saratobi said flatly. You can't do that, Mibuki screeched. Oh, but I very much can you see Inu is an Anbu, and as such I'm the only who gets a vote in this matter, and as such I vote that he can't be charged as the law was still in effect, and as such Inu you are free to go. This emergency meeting of the council is now closed you are all dismissed, except you Danzo. When the other leaves Saratobi rounds on Danzo a furious look on his face. If I ever find out you had a hand in the Saratobi let the threat hang in the air as he walked out. Chapter 3. Rise of Naruto Uchiha. Time skipped seven years later. Naruto's hair had grown out and was now went down the length of his spine, and he had unlocked his Sharingan at age 7, and unlocked the second Tomo a month later, and at 8, he unlocked the three Tomo. Naruto stood at impressive 5 foot 2 inches, and he had mastered several jutsu that Madara and Zetsu taught him. Madara was standing before Naruto, who was doing a set of push-up while Zetsu sat on his back. Hum on Naruto only 50 more. Madara said sadistically, Naruto was sweating as he had already done 450 of them. Th that's wh what you said f 5 minutes ago. Naruto huffed out. Well if you'd stop complaining you'd be done by now. Madara countered. Fine. Naruto went back to what he was doing. You want some of my chakra to heal your limbs? Kurama asked. No thanks Kurama I'm good. Naruto responded back. Over the years Naruto and Kurama developed a deep bond as Biju and Jinchikriki. At first they were like cats and dogs. Flashback two years. Naruto had just finished his morning warm-up and he looked at his grandfather. What do you want me to do now Jiji? Naruto asked. We're going to talk to the fox today and you're going to learn to harness its power. Madara responded. Hey are you sure Jiji? Naruto asked a little frightened. Don't worry Naruto your Jiji will protect it you. Madara smiled. I might not possess two Sharingan which brings out the true potential of the eye, but I'm wise and I still have the power to stop the Kikbi. Madara smiled. Now sit down and focus then we will venture into your mind and then we'll talk to it. Hey alright. Naruto sat down and closed his eyes, and when he opened them he was in a sower, and Madara was standing next to him. Ready Naruto? Why yeah. Naruto and Madara walked forward, and after a few twists and turns they arrived before a gigantic golden gate, with a tag for seal over the gates. Hum forward Kikbi. Madara Chaha. Kurama roared clawing at the gates in his fury, and huge gashes appear on the bars, and then Kurama charges up a Biju Dama, and he blasts the gates, and then the seal tag rips in half, and then the gates forwards nearly flying of their hinges. Just then a man with blonde spiked hair and a standard Konohan in uniform with two bands each on both of his sleeves, a leaf green flak jacket, blue forehead protector, and blue sandals. He also wore a short sleeved long white Hayori over his normal attire, decorated by orange flames like motifs on the edges, with the kanji for fourth hokage written vertically down the back and closed on the front by a thin orange rope. Yandium Hotch. Ah shut you fluffball. Minato said. Why don't we go somewhere more private? Minato snapped his fingers, and the Kurama's cage disappeared, and they were in a gold environment. Then Minato looked and saw Madara and Naruto. Um which one of you Naruto? That would be the boy. Madara says fighting back tears at seeing his son. But how the seal shouldn't have broken that easily. It's because of me I enraged the fluffball over there so much that he tried to obliterate the seal just to kill me. And who are you? Madara cha. Minato's eyes widen in shock. Impossible he died fighting Hashirama-sama. Never mention that Shinobi's name in front of me ever again. He's telling the truth dad. Naruto said. Minato snapped his attention towards Naruto. How? Minato asked. Gigi told me. Naruto looks at Madara. Don't you have something to say Gigi? Minato looks between the two obviously confused. Minato Namikaze I know this won't be easy for you to hear, but I'm your father. Madara said and Minato's eyes widened in shock. H how? Don't you remember me your mother, anything? I remember a woman with blonde hair and a man, and beyond that everything is fuzzy. Maybe you remember this. Madara inhaled and then said in a sweet voice. Bamboo leaves are rustling, rustling swing close to the roof's edge oh, how the stars are twinkling, twinkling gold and silver grains of sand. Five Wishesi have written these stars are twinkling and watching from the sky. As Madara sang the song Minato's eyes started tearing up as the memories came flooding back. The H that song. 
Minato's eyes tear up even more. My mother sung that song to me every night before I'd go to bed, but one day I woke up not in my home, but in an orphanage do you know what happened to my mother? This won't be easy to hear, but she died protected you from a Megakur shinobi who were after me you were so young then. However you saw me all the time there's now way you shouldn't recognize me hang on. Madara makes hand signs. Henj no jutsu. Madara took the form of his younger self armor and all. Father. Minato grabbed his head in pain. Minato. Madara dashed over and saw a seal on Minato's neck. This is a memory alteration seal, but there is a second seal a Keke Genkai seal. Now I get it your memories and Keke Genkai were sealed by someone in Kanoha release. Madara channeled the Jedm statue's chakra though the seal and shattered it. Minato's eyes glazed over and when they cleared Minato hugged Madara. Dusan. Minato started crying. Minato. Madara started crying too, but then Minato started flickering. My chakra is fading I'll rebuild the seal one last time, and two cent take good care of Naruto, this is my last request of you. Minato smiled, then placed his hand on Naruto's stomach and twisted his hand, and the seal was repaired. Goodbye Naruto, two san And with that Minato faded. Then flashback, Madara had secluded himself for a couple of days afterward, and Kurama never stopped trying to break the seal, but about a year of Naruto trying to really get to Kurama's heart, and every time Kurama would just glare and growl, but eventually Kurama looked into Naruto's heart and only found a small sliver of darkness, and when Kurama looked at it, he saw, to his shock, that the darkness didn't have anything to do with using his Sharingan or even the Mokuten that had developed when Naruto got the Zetsu cells fused with his own. Over the time Kurama examined Naruto's charka and felt a rush of calm flow over his dark heart, and Kurama watched as Naruto worked for his power with his blood sweat and tears. Kurama watched as Naruto's heart never succumbed to the inner darkness, and then he remembered Hagoromo's last words. I don't have long anymore. Shukaku, Matatabi, Asobu, Sungak, Kakam, Seiken, Chmei, Jiki, Kurama, even though you have been separated, you shall always be together. Until eventually that time shall come when you will become one you each carry a name, and with a different shape than you had up to now, you will be shown a righteous path, different from the time you spent inside of me. I hope you learn what true power is before that time, maybe I underestimated you Naruto Ichiha, and maybe I misjudged you Madara you never once abandoned your family you loved them. To a kitsune such as myself abandoning one's family is the worst crime Naruto kept working on his push-up, and when he finished Zetsu got off his back. Naruto hopped to his feet and looked at Madara. Well done Naruto your training under me is done, but now I want to tell you about Project Tsuki no Mi. Project Tsuki no Mi. This world is full of things that don't go as you wish. The longer you live the more you realize reality is just made of pain, suffering, and emptiness listen in this world, whenever there is light, there are also shadows. As long as the concept of winners exist, there must also be losers. The selfish desire of wanting to maintain peace causes wars and hatred is born to protect love. I found a way to end that hatred I wanted to create a world of love, a world of winners, a world of peace. I wanted to capture the nine biju and recreate the jubi and use the mugen tsukiyomi to create this world, but now I want nothing more than to that project to fail, I won't hurt my grandson at all you are precious to me. So my grandson go on and avenge my son, your father, Kilabito Uchiha, and Project Tsuki no Mi dies with him. Madara smiles. Now get some sleep Naruto it's late. Hi Jiji. Naruto ran off towards his room, but Madara stayed there and looked at Zetsu with a somber look on his face. You know what to do Zetsu fetch my original eyes it's time I do what I must to give my grandson my final gift. Yes, Madara-sama. Zetsu walks off and Madara waits until he hears the snoring of his grandson, then he grabbed his kunai and walked into Naruto's room, and then lunged at his grandson's sleeping form and plunged the kunai at his heart. Acting on instinct Naruto dodged the kunai and disarmed his attack and then stabbed Madara in the heart, when the light from the other room hit Madara's face Naruto saw who his attacker was. And no. Naruto started crying. Jiji, why? W what have I done? Naruto forgive me. Madara choked out and drew his last breath. Jiji. Naruto's Sharingan activated and then started spinning, forming a four-blade windmill shuriken, and the blades were curved, and they looked like shark fins. Just then Zetsu walked in and saw Madara's dead body. It's alright Naruto this is what Madara-sama wanted. He wanted to die by your hand so you would unlock the Manjikam Sharingan. His final wish was to give you his original eyes so you won't go blind. For the next few weeks I'll be training you in the Manjikam's abilities. Naruto started crying at the dead body of his grandfather. Come on Naruto remember all that Madara taught you. I know Zetsu. Naruto wiped his tears away and got a very cold look on his face. Zetsu I want you to bury Jiji's body somewhere no one will ever find it, but make it something worthy of him. Yes Naruto-sama now will transfer Madara's original eyes it will take a few days for you to adjust to them. Then we'll need to discuss your living situation because Konoha has branded you Kia. I know Zetsu just let me mourn Jiji. 
Madara loved you Naruto don't let his sacrifice be in vain, become stronger I know you can. Alright Zetsu give me Jiji's original eyes. Yes, Naruto-sama. Chapter 4. Naruto and Fu. Time skip one year later. Naruto quickly got used to his grandfather's eyes and mastered his time reversal power. Naruto had yet to discover the power of his own magicum which he ordered Zetsu to dispose of the original as soon as Naruto had Madara's eyes. Naruto donned his grandfather's armor and covered the Uchiha clan symbol with his hair and a small Jinjutsu. Naruto looked at Zetsu and then at the road thinking on his grandfather and his plans. Zetsu, I will be traveling the shinobi world learning the locations of the other Jinchikriki, if you have any suggestions on where I should start, I'd love to hear them. According to my intel the Nanabi Jinchikriki is in Takigakur no Sato, that would be the first place I'd go build a reputation then when you're ready return to Konoha and show them the power of Naruto Uchiha. Thank you Zetsu keep me posted on Abito's movements and keep my movements a secret for as long as possible, we can't let Abito lose trust in you yet. Yes, Naruto-sama. Zetsu sunk into the ground. Naruto took one last look at the mountain graveyard as it went up in smoke, then he leapt off towards the Shikmatsu no Tani, when he arrived he looked at the statue of his grandfather, then leapt up the side and into the ear, and found his grandfather's body lying there peacefully in a bed of flowers. Hey Jiji it's me I hope you can forgive me I know this is what you wanted, but I still miss you I'll become strong I'll make you proud Jiji. Naruto left then he started traveling, and after a few days he arrived at Takigakur where the guard stopped him. Alt state your business in Takigakur. I am here to seek an audience with your leader in requesting residence. Why grounds do you have to request entry? I didn't want to do this, but Naruto activated his Sharingan, and he locked eyes with the guards whose eyes widened in shock at seeing the legendary Keke Genkai of the Ichiha clan. Jinjutsu. Sharingan. Feel free to enter. Thank you. Naruto smiled and walked into the village and towards where he sensed the highest chakra signature when, out of the corner of his eye, he saw a girl who wore an orange clip in her short spiky mint green hair that matched her eye color, which was also orange. Her ninja outfit consisted of a short sleeveless white midra shirt with fishnet armor underneath, long wide armlets, and fishnet shorts with a short wide apron skirt over it. Her forehead protector was worn on her right arm. She also carried a cylindrical object in red wrapping on her back. The girl was scrounging around in the garbage, while Naruto saw the people around her giving her dirty looks and the same glares he received from Konoha. When the girl saw Naruto she noticed how he didn't have a look of hatred on his face. Hey mister could you help me I'm alone and I'm hungry these people treat me like dirt. I know that felling. Did I sense demon chakra coming off of her? Kurama said. From the feel of this chakra it's the Nanabi. That explains the looks. Nice to meet you Nana. Nice to meet you too Kayu. Fu said. Naruto reached into his pouch and pulled out a bag full of Ryo that Zetsu had given him. Here buy yourself some food. Naruto smiled. Thanks mister. Fu smiled. Call me Naruto. I'm Fu. Anyway do you know where your leader resides? Fu's look turned dark. Yeah I know where he is, but I doubt he'll listen to a word you say. You're a jinch cricky after all, and you've associate yourself with me so I really doubt he'll care. I have my methods. Naruto activated his Sharingan. Th those eyes. Yes I wield the Sharingan Keke Genkai, so I can convince the leader to let me stay. You'll find the leader in that tower over there. Fu pointed to the small tower that was intertwined with a large tree in the center. Thanks Fu. Naruto smiled at her. It's been fun Naruto now I'm gonna get something to eat. Likewise Fu. Naruto walked off towards where Fu pointed out, and when he arrived the two guards outside looked at him with contempt. We don't have time for a demon lover. The guard snarled. Naruto got an impassive look on his face. Let me talk to your leader before things get ugly. Naruto flares his Sharingan and unleashes a torrent of Kai. I'm right this way. That's what I thought. Naruto smiled sickly then then he walked into the office. So why are you here? The man behind the desk said. I'm here to join Takigakur. Sir he's associated with the Jinch Kriki. One of his guards said to the leader in his ear. Shibaka's eyes narrowed slightly, but he said nothing. So what can you bring to our village? Shibaka asked this. Naruto activated his Sharingan and then made the snake hand seal. Mokuten. Makujaheki. Wood style. Wood wall. D that's T the Shadame Hokage's Mokuten. Shibaka stuttered. Yes I wield the Sharingan and Hashirama's Mokuten. Th the council must hear of this. Shibaka got up and looked at one of his shinobi. Gather the council, tell them we're going to get a new Keke Genkai. Yes sir. Ten minutes later Naruto was standing in a circular room with a bunch of people standing around him. So Naruto Uchiha you have partitioned to join Takigakur what can you contribute to this village? One council member asked, I have these blessed eyes. Naruto activates his Sharingan, and everyone gasped. The Sharingan. He truly is an Uchiha. A second council member said. He'll be an asset to this village. A third council member said. Let's put the matter to a vote. Shibaka said. All in favor. All at once everyone raised their hands allowing Naruto to stay. 
Then it's decided Naruto Uchiha welcome to Takigakur here as your headband. Shibaka tossed Naruto a Taki forehead protector. Thank you Shibaka-sama. Naruto bowed then he walked out and to his surprise Fu was standing outside. Iritaki Shinobi. Fu said happily as she saw his forehead protector. Yeah I am now I was wondering if you wanted to do some training with me. Sure I can teach you about Taki. Then let's go. Time skipped three months later. Naruto and Fu had developed a close bond become great friends. Naruto and Kurama helped Fu and Chimei with learning to control Chimei's chakra. Naruto noticed the dirty looks he and Fu got when they were walking down the road getting food, but Naruto used his Sharingan to get fair prices with the locals, but when the council saw Naruto's overprotective nature they got nervous, and so here, Naruto found himself in the council room. Naruto Uchiha it has come to our attention that you have become rather close to Fu we of the council have to protest such closeness, what we are about to tell you is highly rank secret. Fu is the Jinch Kriki of the Nanabi she is a ticking time bomb of demonic chakra. With all due respect I'm sealing expert and I've learned a lot, and one of the first things I learned was how to recognize a faulty seal, and Fu has exhibited nothing of the sort. And how would you know the signs of a faulty seal? Sealing is in my blood, my mother was in Yuzumaki, and my grandfather took me to the ruins of Yuzushi Agakur. It was on my 8th birthday my grandfather and I went to Yuzushi Agakur, and there I found an ancient archive of Kenjutsu that only one of Yuzumaki blood could unlock, and then I took my family's records and techniques and spent 3 years learning Kenjutsu, and 3 years is a long time especially. If I use cage bunshins, shadow clones, to speed up the training so in really I took 40 years of Kenjutsu experience and compressed it into only 3 years. How could you have so much chakra let alone know a B-ranked Kenjutsu of Konoha? We Uzumaki have a certain curse we are cursed with abnormally high chakra levels, and as for me knowing a B-rank in Jutsu of Konoha, most other nations know that Jutsu, so my Jiji knew it, and he taught it to me. Well regardless of your knowledge of seals the council has voted to banish you from the village, as Fu can't afford to have any distractions she is Arjinch Kriki she is this village's muscle. Fine if you wanna lose the Sharingan it's not my problem. You have until morning to be gone or we will kill you. Okay bye. Naruto took off the forehead protector and tossed it back to Shibaka. It's been fun. Naruto walked out and then walked away the house where he slept, and he packed his things, and when he walked out he saw Fu standing there. Hey Naruto. Fu smiled then she saw his backpack and the apartment he had emptied out of his possessions. Hey Fu. You going somewhere? The village has kicked me out so I'm going to travel the shinobi world gather allies and see if I can one day return to my original home. I'm going with you. But Fu. No buts I'm going with you. If you leave the villagers will just hurt me worse than before, besides there is nothing for me here. Alright I'll trick the guards with a cage bunshin while you escape with me under a henge no jutsu. Transformation jutsu. Alright when do we leave? Now. Okay let's go. Fu transformed into a random civilian and Naruto used jinjutsu to hide her chakra. Then Naruto and Fu left the village but at separate times as not to arouse suspicion and Naruto used a transformed cage bunshin to fool the guards into thinking Fu was still in the village. After a while Naruto undid the jinjutsu while Fu undid the henge. I'm free. Yeah you are now let's get moving we've got a lot of ground to cover and not a lot of time to do it. Chapter 5. Haku and Zabuza. Time skip one month later. Naruto and Fu were traveling somewhere near Nami no Kuni when suddenly a huge mist rolled in Naruto, activated his Sharingan and stared around and saw, to his shock, the mist was chakra laced and Naruto couldn't see a thing, but his sensory abilities told him there were two powerful chakra signatures nearby. Do lonely little brats, but from the feel of your chakra you're not normal brats. A voice came from the mist. Who's there? Fu asked slightly scared as a torrent of Kai was unleashed upon the two of them. What goal you have asking me who I am when I'm about to kill you? The voice responded. If you hand over your supplies and money I'll let you live. Naruto drew his gun by. Well do you wish to dance? Naruto asked then he swung his gun by. Futon. Fanned wind. Naruto unleashed a huge blast of wind that destroyed the mist. When it disappeared Naruto saw a man with a large cleaver slung over his shoulder. Well, well, well what do we have here you're not some average little brat are you? Shall we dance? Naruto asked charging the man gun by in one hand and his scythe in the other. Naruto into the air swinging down with his scythe anticipating Zabuza to raise his kubikurumjim to block, but Zabuza dodges a smirk on his face and swings his kubikurumjim with the intent to cut Naruto in half, but Naruto spins in the air and uses the momentum to bring his gun by down and deflected the sword with the end of his gun by and goes and swing with the scythe again. You're good kid really good. Zabuza grunts. The same could be said of you. Naruto swiftly dodges the sword slash and counters with his gun by wind wall, blasting Zabuza backwards. Naruto takes the temporary lax in battle to form hand signs after he created a shadow clone. Ninpo Futan no Katen collaboration. Wukina Ryu Aiki. The two Naruto's roar channeling as much chakra as possible to their jutsu blasting as much fire in order destroys Zabuza entirely. 
after Zabuza dodges the extreme blast of fire he and Naruto clash again and again, while Fu watches with shock and envy at Naruto's power, but eventually Zabuza overwhelmed Naruto and held his sword up to Naruto's throat. You're not bad kid who trained you. My grandfather, Madaracha. Your Madaracha has grandson. Yes. But he died at the Shimatsu no Tani. No he didn't Hashirama didn't confirm the kill and Jiji survived. Naruto got a sad look on his face. But one year ago I kill him but it was accident and I unlock these cursed eyes. Naruto's eyes shifted to his eye and no magicum. A kid like yourself really shouldn't travel alone, why don't you join me and Haku you both possess strength but the girl needs to learn to resist Kai but I can train her. Thank you but I never got your name. My name is Abusa Mamachi the Karitakur no Kijin. My name is Naruto Uchiha, and this is my friend Fushi and I are technically Ryu Shinobi from Takigakur, I was banished, so I have no village association, but Fu is a registered Takigakur Nukunin. As in Rinpan no Fu. I've heard of you kid. Zabuza turns to Fu. You've got a high bounty on your head from Takigakur, but it says you are to captured you alive. That's because I'm a Jinch Kriki they want me back so they can place a control seal on me, so I never run away or have free will. Well then you and Naruto are welcome to join us. Zabuza turned to a nearby tree. Haku come out and introduce yourself to your new teammates. Haku jumped down and held out his hand. Hello Naruto san Fu san I am Haku and before you ask I am a boy. Haku said smiling. Nice to meet you too Haku. Fu smiled. Nice to meet you too Haku. Naruto smiled. Now brats I'll be training you up to an Anbu level, Fu I want you to start mastering your Rinpan techniques and then we'll work on some ninjutsu after we discover your affinity. Naruto I want you to work on your reaction time as well as ocular prowess, for that you will train with Haku she's the fastest, so you'll need to train your body to match what your eyes can see. Yes, Zabuza sensei. Fu and Naruto said. Haku and Naruto faced each other and Naruto activated a Sharingan. Haku made a single hand sign. Makam Haimshim. Crystal ice mirrors, Haku made a dome of mirrors and Naruto eyes stung from a moment before involuntarily shifting to his Manjikam Sharingan, before understanding of the technique came with his ocular prowess. Naruto-san why have you activated your Manjikam? These eyes? Naruto said shocked. They must allow me to copy elemental Keke Genkai. But that's impossible not even the Sharingan can copy my Jutsu. Each Manjikam Sharingan comes with a unique ability my grandfather's was the ability to reverse time mine must be to copy elemental Keke Genkai. Can you prove it? Naruto nodded the made the same hand sign Haku made. Makam Haimshim. Naruto made the same dome, but instead of the set of 21 Naruto made 30. Such chakra. Haku said shocked. Even at my absolute limit I can only make 21, but to make 30 with ease, and based on how you're not even sweating, I bet this isn't your limit. Probably not if I were to utilize Kurama's chakra who knows how many I could make. Well let's get back to training. Right. Naruto deactivated his Manjikam and the mirrors he created shattered. So in order to utilize elemental Keke Genkai you need to have my Manjikam activated interesting. Haku takes advantage of Naruto's distraction to charge, but Naruto jumps out of the way with ease and practices with his reaction time. Time skip one month later, Naruto, Fu, Haku, Zabuza, Maizu and Gozu were all facing a short little man who barely came up to Fu's waist. Over the past month Fu had mastered Rinpan techniques including Rinpunkagur and Rinpan Bakusai. Over the time they learned that Fu had a wind affinity as well as fire affinity. Naruto's reaction time was on his father's level, and he had learned to master several Hyoten ninjutsu and invented several of his own. Alright then it's agreed, the six of you will kill Tazuna, and in exchange, I will pay you 22 million Ryo. Gato said. Alright Gato you got yourself a deal. Zabuza responded Gato walks out of the room, and his guards follow him. Zabuza sama who will we send to kill him? Haku asks. Haku let's send the demon brothers I am sure they can handle whatever puny ninja the leaf will send, as Gato has bleed this country dry, they could only pay for a C rank as most. Zabuza says. Yes, Zabuza sama. Maizu and Guzo responded, then they departed, and Naruto got a sour look on his face, then he started to walk out, but Zabuza placed a hand on his shoulder. Naruto something wrong? Zabuza asked. I know we need the money, but I have a moral problem with this mission. We are shinobi we aren't meant to allow our emotions to interfere. I'll tell you something I told my grandfather when he told me something similar. My grandfather once told me this. Love is not necessary power is the only true necessity, however I countered with this. To suppress our emotions it will lead to weakness and despair, they will surface every time we try they will destroy us from the inside out, love is just as necessary as hate. To suppress one emotion is to suppress them all, and it limits out ability to think clearly and adapt to situations to my shock, Madara Jiji agreed with me and started tearing up as those were the same words my botch and Rika told him once. Whoa that's deep Naruto, but I guess you have a point, but I have a reputation to uphold I can't ask you to like this mission, but we have to finish it. 
Oh right Zabuza sensei I'll do it, but don't expect me to like it. Naruto walked off towards a small room where he slept and closed his eyes and started meditating, and when he opened his eyes he was in his forest mindscape, and he walked towards Kurama's cave. Kurama come on out we need to talk. Kurama walked forward and looked at his host. What did you want to talk about Kit? I need to train with your chakra, but to do that properly, I would need the key to your seal any idea where I can get that. The last thing I saw before I was sealed was a toad by the name of uh give me a minute. Kurama thought for a minute then his eyes snapped open. Jiratora that was the name and according to what I remember from Kishina's memories the holder of the toad contract is Jiraiya of the Sanin. Contacting him will be difficult any suggestions. Well the best way and certainly the easiest would be to venture to Kanoha and ask the Sandane to contact him for you, but as you and Kanoha don't have the greatest history that's not a great option, another way would be to do something that would require Jiraiya to use his spy network to locate you and track you. For that I suggest you attack some shinobi of Kanoha and let them live, but tell them your name which will force them to report that to Suratobi, and that will get Jiraiya looking for you. Thanks Kurama, I think that second option will be easier as even the Oni Kim die fail, the Kanoha shinobi will be on high alert, and that's when Zabuza sensei and I make our move. You're clever kid I like that about you. Kurama smiled. See you Kurama. And then Naruto fade from his mind, and when he opened his eyes he saw Fu sitting on her bed, Chimei's chakra swirling around her like a whirlwind of energy. As Naruto watched as the first tail sprouted and a few seconds later the second tail and another few seconds the third, then fourth, but as the fifth tail emerged Fu's skin started to turn red as she started losing control. Oh boy. Naruto started weaving hand signs. Mokuten. Mikuryu no Jutsu. Wooden Dragon Jutsu, Naruto held out his hand and the wooden dragon shot from it and wrapped around Fu suppressing the chakra while simultaneously absorbing it form a small arcade of trees. Thanks Naruto Fu huffed out, no problem next time let me know when you start training with Jamei's chakra. Gotcha. Time skip three days later, failed. What do you mean they failed? Gato shouted at Zabuza. Stop whining. This time I will go personally, and this sword will be the last thing he sees. Zabuza says as he swings his sword and holds just in front of Gato's throat. You sure about that apparently the old man hired some protection, and they have several high-ranking ninja with him. Since your first attempt failed they will be watching it will take someone with very advanced skills. Who do you think you're dealing with? I am Zabuza Mamachi the Karigakur no Kijin. Zabuza turned to Naruto. Naruto you come with me for backup. Yes, sensei. Naruto said then he ran back into his room and grabbed his gun by and the side Naruto, then shouldered them and followed Zabuza out of the room, and they leaped, though the trees and Zabuza started motioning to Naruto, who nodded and took his position and suppressed his chakra. Just then the boy with the Inuzuka tattoos on his face threw a kunai Zabuza, but he substituted with the snow rabbit they carried with them. The babaka. The pink-haired girl shouted. Stop playing with kunai you nearly killed the poor rabbit. I swear there was someone there Sakura. Kiba said. Kiba was right Sakura, and if you used your brain for 5 seconds you'd realize that this rabbit was raised indoors away from the light, meaning its only purpose was for a kawarimi. A girl with a beige jacket and lavender eyes. Oh shut up Hinata. Sakura responded. Hinata. Naruto thought. Where have I heard that name before? Naruto had a contemplating look on his face. That's it. Naruto remembered the little girl who he rescued from bullies back when he was four. Flashback nine years ago, Naruto was walking down the road not too far from a nearby section of the forest that encompassed part of Kanoha hands in his pockets, when he hears a noise a quite a few feet away, Naruto runs towards the noise and sees a few bullies picking on a girl with short blue hair and pale eyes. So pathetic as if you could ever be a true haikta. They'll leave me alone. The girl responds, please leave me alone. One of them mocks please don't hurt me. If you were truly a haika you would make us stop. They all start laughing at the girl when Naruto steps out of the wall behind them, back off. Naruto snarls, and who are you to defend this pansy of a haika? The first one says, wait I know that guy. A second one said. He's that brat my parents told me to stay away from. Oh you mean that brat who keeps going on about being hokage? The same. Of this ought to be good let's teach him a lesson. Naruto started weaving hand signs. Th those hand signs. Bunshin no jutsu. Naruto roared out, but as usual Naruto fucked it up and created a crap clone. What a joke. The first kid said laughing, let's beat the crap out of him. The second kid said, yeah. The third kid agreed. Then flashback, Anata chan I never thought I'd see you again, but what do you really think of me? Just then Naruto saw Zabuza's Kubikurum flying in, but then the gray haired Jan and yelled out. Duck. He dragged his team to the ground, and the others dodged to the right or left depending on their position. Then Zabuza landed on his blade that dug into the tree. Zabuza Mamachi the demon of the bloody mist. Hinata glares at the man in front of her. Ah so lonely Jenin knows my name. Zabuza says bowing. I see that my illustrious reputation precedes me. An. 
Yes I got that from Dragon Ball Z. Fusion Reborn, which I don't own either. Well when you slaughter your entire graduating class and then try to assassinate the I believe it was the fourth Mizukage that tends to get your name in the bingo book of every ninja village across the world. Hinata said with a pause recalling the Mizukage aspect pertaining to Zabuza. If he is our opponent then I will need to use my Sharingan. Kakashi thinks lifting his headband. Kakashi of the Sharingan I am I right? Zabuza asks then he notices Kurinai. And Kurinai Iki Kano has Jinjutsu Shujin, Naruto get out here let's see how your bloodline faces against a Jinjutsu master such as her. Yes, Zabuza Sama. Naruto said then he jumped down and landed in front the group of nine. Everyone's eyes widened at that name and when they saw Naruto Kakashi's eyes started tearing up. And Naruto. Kakashi said shocked. Naruto-kun. Hinata though shocked as she saw her crush again. He looks different he's calmer more powerful than before. Hinata activated her by Akigen and examined his chakra levels. Everyone be careful he's got unbelievable chakra he's a tailed beast's levels. What? Sasuke and the others looked shocked. Naruto opened his closed eyes as he put his emotions aside like his grandfather taught him and activated his Sharingan. When Sasuke saw it his fear turned to fury. How dare you? Sasuke charged Naruto. Sasuke don't charge in alone. Kakashi shouted, but Sasuke didn't listen, and Naruto dodged Sasuke's enraged punches with ease. Why? Can't. I. Hit. Him. Sasuke threw punch and kicks, but Naruto dodged them with a bored expression on his face. Enough. Naruto scoffed, and he disappeared from Sasuke's side in a burst of speed, then he dropped under Sasuke's guard and slammed his fist right into Sasuke's gut, then he flipped over Sasuke and kicked him in the back, sending Sasuke flying into a tree, when he made contact Sasuke collapsed into unconsciousness. Sasuke-kun. Sakura shouted and ran to her love. You're dead. Sakura rushed Naruto, but Naruto dodged her strikes with no effort, then Naruto grabbed his gun by and swung it. Die. When Naruto swung the gun by three tornadoes of fire, but because of Sakura's closeness to the gun by she was blasted by all three tornadoes, Sakura was sent flying, and she landed into the water her clothes singed, and she her skin was suffering from third degree burns. Naruto you jerk I'll fucking kill you. You ruined my hair and clothes. You are pathetic. Naruto stuck his gun by point into the ground. Zabuza Sama do I have permission to kill whoever gets in my way? I'm a little busy. Zabuza responded as he was fighting Kakashi on the surface of the water sword against Kunai. But go ahead. Yes, Zabuza Sama. Naruto rushed in at blinding speeds towards Kurinai, who just finished her last hand sign. Majin. Narukumi no Jutsu. The leaves swirled around Naruto who looked on board when he saw his grandfather on the ground a Kunai in his chest. Naruto forgive me. Madara choked out. Hit. Kurama said gaining his host's attention. I know Kurama. Naruto flared his chakra and unleashed a torrent of Kai that floored even Zabuza. How dare you. Naruto roared and he started weaving hand signs. Katen. Nkamakyaku. Fire style. Great fire annihilation. Naruto unleashed a gigantic breath of flame towards his foes, obliterating anything and everything in its path. Anada struggled to her feet fighting off the Kai with thoughts of protecting her comrades. Shugo Haki Rakugayanshu. A trigram 64 palms guard, Hinata unleashed a huge torrent of chakra, as the sphere of chakra tore thought the torrent of fire protecting her teammates, however Kurinai started running for her life, bitch. Naruto roared and he activated his iron no magicum. Susanao. Naruto started channeling chakra into the Susanao's palm. Yutsaka Magatama. Naruto threw the attack, but with her swift reflexives Kurinai dodged the attack which rocket past her and destroyed a large section of the forest when it exploded. Naruto stopped this. Hinata shouted gaining his attention, and he rounded on her his wrath and his chakra on an ungodly level. She dares to show me the greatest regret in my life. It's Suga. Fang over Fang, Kiba's voice roared out, and two swirling spirals rocketed toward Naruto, but his Susanao blocked the attack, and Naruto grabbed Kiba and the transformed Akamaru. Just as Naruto is about to crush them a blast of water captures Naruto's attention, and he sees Zabuza in danger, so Naruto drops his Susanao and dashed at full speed and took the attack that Kakashi thrust with his kunai, but Naruto smiled and gripped Kakashi's arm. I had it. Naruto started weaving hand signs when suddenly three senbin him and Zabuza in the neck, knocking them out. I thank you for your assistance in taking them down, I've been waiting for days for them to drop their guard. Haku said behind his hunter mask. You're a hunter ninja aren't you? Kakashi said. Yes I am now I must go these two are going to the collection office. Haku grabbed Naruto and Zabuza then shunshined away. Well this has been an interesting experience. Hinata said then she saw Kakashi collapse. Azuna-san how far is to your house? Kurinai asked. About a mile. Tazuna responded. 
then we'll be there in about an hour if we push ourselves, but we can't travel too fast, because we have three injured shinobi one of them is suffering from major burns, another who knows what, and Kakashi is suffering from chakra exhaustion. Kurinai picked up Sasuke while Kiba and Akamaru picked up Sakura and Kakashi, and they started the long trek back to Zuna's house. But Haku and the others one day later, Naruto woke up and saw Haku standing over Zabuza. Damn did Haku what the hell was that for? Naruto asked as he got to his feet. I'm sorry, but if you had lost control Zabuza-sama might have been hurt. Haku responded. Naruto got up and started walking around. I'm surprised you recovered so quickly not even Zabuza-sama can recover at the speed you do. It's because I'm a jinch cricky the biju inside of me heals me and aids in my recovery. Damn it Haku did you have to throw those senbin in my neck? Zabuza grumbles. Oh you're awake I thought you would be out for at least another day or two. Haku says smiling at his master. I can get the needles out. Zabuza reaches up and pulls out a bunch of the senbin out of his neck. Careful Zabuza sama you shouldn't pull a bunch out of time or you could die of blood loss. Just then Gato walks in with his two samurai guards following him. You failed. Didn't you tell me that you would take care of it personally, and the last thing that brat Tazuna would ever see was your sword, Gato yells at Zabuza walking forward and reaching for Zabuza's mask when Haku grabs his hand. How dare you try to threaten Zabuza sama. Haku glares at Gato, kill him. Gato yells at his guards. Haku glares at the guards unleashing killer intent. The guards faint under the strain. Try that again and I ensure you that they won't get back up. Haku glares. Hind you have one more chance to complete the job or the contract's over. Gato walks out. That wasn't necessary I could have handled it. Zabuza says lifting up his bedsheet to reveal a kunai. We can't kill Gato just yet the murders would just draw their attention. Haku says. We have to show restraint for now. Hine, how long do you think I'll be out of commission? A week but knowing you it will take half that time. Haku smiles. I'm going for a walk Haku do you need me to look for any supplies to aid in Zabuza's recovery? Naruto asked. Yes I'll give you a list of herbs I need and their physical description, but be careful with Kanoha out there and your identity compromised they might attack you if they see you. I'm not worried. Naruto walked out and after a few minutes of walking and gathering herbs for Haku. Naruto started walking and eventually he walked into a destroyed clearing, and Naruto saw, to his shock, Hinata was lying there fast asleep Naruto scanned her over with his Sharingan and saw she was suffering from minor chakra exhaustion, and she would awaken momentarily. Naruto walked over to her and he shook her shoulder. When Hinata opened her eyes she saw Naruto kneeling over her. Then Naruto. Hinata jumped up and dropped into a jaikin stance. Relax Hinata I'm not here to hurt you. Naruto said getting up and looked at her. Why are you here? The hunter ninja killed you. Haku is our ally she placed us in a death-like state. Hinata started tearing up. Thank Kami-sama. I thought I had lost you for a second time. Second time? Naruto asked confused. Two years after your disappearance the Hokage gathered the village and declared that you kidnapped, and then he declared you Kia I cried for weeks. My clan elders pushed my father to brand me with the cage bird seal on me, but after your death I trained and trained, and I've become a Jayakin master, one the likes my clan hasn't seen since my great-grandmother. Well you've got impressive chakra that much I can tell, however I have to ask you something. What? Do you have someone who is precious to you? Well there's you, Miyamoto Hanabi, and my two san. Then you will grow very strong Hinata, when someone has a person who is precious to them, it's only then that their true strength emerges. I've got a question for you if you will indulge me. Alright shoot. If you weren't dead who trained you I know that you didn't have the Sharingan before. My grandfather, Madara Echeha, he helped to make me strong. What did Kurinai sensei make you see that sent you into a rage like that? You see two years ago my grandfather was dying the force that had keep him alive was failing him, and as such, he wanted to die on his terms, not on anyone else's so while I slept, he crept into the room that I slept in, and tried to plunge a kunai into my heart, but my reaction time and instincts kicked in, and I dodged the blow, disarmed him, and plunged the same kunai into Madara Jiji's heart as last. Words were Naruto forgive me then he dropped dead, and I unlocked these cursed eyes. Naruto activated his eye and no magicum. What is that? My eye and no magicum Sharingan, you see over time the regular magicum would go blind, cutting off the light from the user's eyes forever, but you can avoid this by transplanting the eyes of a direct relative, unlock the final form of these eyes, my original eyes are gone, I disposed of them, I don't want them falling into anyone else's hands. Naruto started looking at Hinata. It's been fun Hinata, but I've got to go. Naruto smiled then he leapt off towards where Haku was waiting. Naruto hand Haku the herbs, then went for a walk after a while of walking Naruto came across one of Gato's hidden hideouts by complete accident. Naruto saw Gato and an army of thugs walking into the hideout, and Naruto decided to follow Gato, and he activated his Sharingan while concealing his chakra. So according to the Haku brat Zabuza will be back in business within the week now the moment those Konoha shinobi weaken Zabuza and his cronies we finish them, then sell the girls on the slave market. 
Gato said to his gang of thugs. But you're to bring me the Haika girl I'm going to break her in personally. Naruto was seething at this point but managed to suppress his chakra, but he'd heard enough and Shunshine to the hideout. When he arrived Naruto immediately went to Zabuza who was sitting up in bed. Ah Naruto did you bring the herbs I asked for? Haku said as he gave Zabuza some tea to drink. Yeah I did, but I'm afraid I've come across a very important piece of information and then there's something I need your help with Zabuza sensei. What's the news? Haku asked. Edo plans to betray us after you recover. How do you know? Zabuza asked. I overheard him talking to an army of thugs here let me show you. Naruto activated his Sharingan and cast his Jinjutsu on Zabuza showing him the memory. What do we do Zabuza sensei? At Fu and we'll think on a plan. Yes, Zabuza sensei. Naruto left and walked to Fu's room, then he knocked on the door. What is it? Fu's voice came from behind the door. Zabuza sensei want to see us for an update on our mission. Alright give me a minute. Fu walked out and then she and Naruto walked to Zabuza and Haku just then Naruto sensed Zetsu's charka nearby. Zabuza sensei Haku, Fu I need to talk to someone, but if I'm right he can help us. Alright Naruto but hurry up. Zabuza responded. Naruto nodded and walked outside and Zetsu rose up out of the ground. What news do you have to report Zetsu? The Bido is on the move. Black Zetsu responded. He's headed to Kurigakur to take advantage of the Sanbi Jinch Kriki and weaken them by waging war on the Keke Genkai users. Keep me posted on his movements. Yes, Naruto-sama. White Zetsu said. Before you go I need your help with something. What do you need Naruto-sama? Bring me three white Zetsu clones and then I'll need you to have them wrap around three hinged wood clones after they merge with their chakra. Yes, Naruto-sama. White Zetsu has three white Zetsu clones rise up from the ground. Follow me. Naruto commanded. Naruto and the Zetsu and the clones walk back into the room and Zabuza, Haku and Fu looked confused. This is Zetsu say hi Zetsu. Hi Zetsu. Knock it off. Black Zetsu scolded. Why are you here? Zabuza asked. I am an ally of Naruto-sama his orders are to help you three, if you would place your hand on the white Zetsu clones we can begin. Zabuza, Haku and Fu placed their hands on the clones and they absorb the chakra and morph into exact replicas of the shinobi the clones touched. Now's it my turn. Naruto started weaving hand signs. Mokuten Bunshin no Jutsu. Naruto forms three wood clones. Zetsu use your clones and wrap around the clones and I'll do the rest. Yes, Naruto-sama. White Zetsu says and then the closes unravel themselves and then wrap themselves around the clones. Naruto starts weaving the same hand signs his grandfather used. Inpo. Hadaik no Jutsu. The three clones glowed in the same blue that Naruto glowed when Madara preformed the Jutsu then when the clones opened their eyes, they all had the Sharingan, then they all shifted to the Manjikam. Now we need to spend the next few days training the clones in your fighting styles so they can flawlessly take your places in the battle against Kakashi and his allies. Right. Fu said. But what is this plan exactly? These clones take your place in the battle allowing us to deliver the final strike to Gato when I dispel the clones. Alright let's do this. Fu smiled. Time skip six days later. Naruto and the Zetsu wood clones picked their gear and ran off towards the bridge. When they arrived the Zabuza clone attacked the workers knocking them out. Karigakur no Jutsu. Zabuza, of Kakashi, Kurinai, Sasuke, Hinata, Sakura, Kiba and Akamaru. On your guard you two this mist is chakra laced. Kakashi says. I knew he was still alive he just couldn't wait for round two. Sorry I kept you waiting Kakashi. A voice calls from the mist that is all too familiar to all of them. Next to Kakashi Sasuke started trembling. I see that boy is still trembling how pathetic. I'm trembling with excitement. Sasuke says. Just then ten Zabuzas appear around them. Sasuke do it. Kakashi says, and Sasuke nods then with a swift series of movements, takes down all the Mizubunshin, and they burst into the puddle. I can see it. Though you could see they were water clones the brad is improving, looks like you've got a rival Haku. Zabuza says, so it seems. Haku says, well, well so I had it right. Kakashi says. It was all an act. An act. Tazuna says confused. But the cute little mask. Big phony. Sasuke glares. So I guess being a tracker ninja protecting her village was just a bunch of bull. Tazuna says. They look pretty chummy I'd say that they've been pulling scams like that for a long time. Kakashi says then Hinata glares at Haku by Akigan blazing. And hiding behind a mask who does he think he's fooling. Speak for yourself sensei. Hinata smiles. That's it I'm taking him out. Sasuke glares. He is quite the man. Even if a water clone has only 10% of the original person's power. He dealt them with them nicely. Haku says, we've made the first move now attack. Zabuza says, yes, Zabuza-sama. Haku steps and starts spinning and Sasuke blocks the senbin with a kunai. He caught up with Haku's speed impressive. Zabuza says, Anada, stick with Tazuna-san and don't get too far from me. Let Sasuke handle this. 
Kakashi says. Haku and Sasuke start spinning clashing kunai to send them over and over. I don't want to kill you, but you won't back off, right? Haku asks. What are you stupid? Sasuke asked. As I thought but you'd be able to keep up with me or my next move. And I'm already two steps ahead of you. Two steps ahead. The first one is the water on the ground, and the second one is that I'm keeping one of your arms busy, so you're only able to take and block my attacks. Haku raises her hand and starts weaving hand signs with a single hand. Hand signs with only one hand. Kakashi's eyes widen in shock. Hyoten. Sensatsu Sushim Haku stomps the ground and the water that was left from the water clones, dispelling rose up and formed into a thousand needles, and surrounds Sasuke and Haku. I don't want to kill you he said, but is that what she really thinks? Zabuza thinks as he observes the battle unfold. Sasuke. Sakura shouts in concern her crush, Sasuke closes his eyes and starts to focus his chakra, and then Haku leaps back just before the attack connects and Sasuke leaps into the air, however in the explosion of water Haku fails to notice this. When Haku looks back at where Sasuke was she didn't Sasuke anywhere. He disappeared. Just then Haku looks up and sees Sasuke floating their kunai in hand, then he throws a few shuriken at Haku who leaps back to avoid them. Just then Sasuke appears right behind Haku. You're pretty slow. Now you can only receive and block my attacks. Both Haku and Sasuke move in a blur of speed and end up and in crossed arm position then Sasuke smirks at he throws his kunai and Haku ducks to dodge it but only ends up walking right into Sasuke's kick which blasts her back towards Zabuza. Haku lost in a contest of speed. Zabuza thinks in shock, then he looks at Sasuke, looks like my speed is just a bit faster. You shouldn't underestimate my team just because they're kids. Kakashi I smiles. Sasuke here is a true prodigy of the Hidden Leaf Village. Hinata here is a true Jaikin master, so you know the battle prowess of the Haika clan. Zabuza starts chuckling. Haku, do you understand that you're going to get defeated like this? Zabuza asks. Yes. Haku responds as his chakra pours out of him. What is that? Sasuke stares in wonder. It's a shame. That's cold air. Haku makes a single hand sign, and ice mirrors starts to form all around Sasuke. Makam Heimshm. Hey I like this attack I can see myself everywhere. Sasuke thinks as he looks around. Then the mirrors glow as Haku steps forward. What is that technique? Kakashi thinks in fear. Then Haku steps into one of the mirrors, and his reflection starts to appear everywhere. These are mirrors, what does he plan to do? Damn it. Kakashi curses as he starts to run forward. Then in a blur of speed Zabuza appears in front of Kakashi. I'm your opponent remember? He's a goner now that Haku has used that technique. Let's begin. I will show you my true speed. Haku says as she lifts his arms and starts throwing tons of senbin at Sasuke so fast that Sasuke can keep up with speed of the blows. Sasuke. Kakashi shouts as more and more attacks connect and the kunai in his hand flies out of his grip and embeds itself into the ground not too far from Hinata and Tazuna. Sasuke screams in pain as more senbin slice at his skin. Don't even think of moving because if you do I will kill the two behind you. Zabuza says. Sakura looks at Tazuna then back at Sasuke trapped in the dome. I'm sorry Tazuna-san, but I have to leave for a few seconds. Sakura says. Tazuna nods at Sakura. Though I won't stop you. Tazuna responds. Sakura runs forward the kunai in her hand. Sasuke heads up. Sakura calls out as she throws the kunai to her fallen teammate. However before the kunai can reach its intended recipient it is snatched out of the air by Haku, and Sasuke's legs give out beneath him. He caught a damn. Sakura thinks in despair, but just as Haku re-enters the mirror. Hinata was watching the confrontation just then Hinata sensed Naruto's charka behind her and Tazuna. Haki KKSHM. A trigrams air palm, Hinata shouts, and then Naruto gets blasted back, and then he lands on his feet. Nicely done Hinata you're strong I think I will dance with you for a while. Naruto draws his gun by and charges Hinata who charges chakra erupting from her palms. Hinata starts striking at Naruto who dodges her strikes thanks to his Sharingan. You're good Naruto-kun, but why work for a man like Gato? I need the money. Naruto responds as dodges another strike. Why don't you come back to Konoha with me? Even if I did what would there be for me? The civilian council has declared my Kia Day a national holiday they would just hunt me down and try to kill me. Dusan can protect you just come back you haven't see what the village is like, the Hokage is not the same man he used to be, if it weren't for the clan heads threatening civil war if Danzo or anyone calls for an incompetency hearing Danzo would have replaced the Sandame. If that's the state of the village then there's nothing for me the moment I walk into that village I'll be held on trial for abandonment. As I said Konoha holds nothing but pain and regrets for me. Naruto please. Hinata pleaded tears cascading from her eyes, Naruto vanished and pinned her to the ground. This is all part of a plan that I concocted with Zabuza sensei, but for it to work Gato has to show up as for your offer I'm weighing my options, but for now you need to be unconscious, good night, Hinata-chan. 
Naruto tapped her on the back of her neck, knocking Hinata out. It's Suga. Naruto jumped up activating his Manjikam. Well in Inuzuka this will be an interesting dance. Naruto drew his gun by. What is you fascination with dancing? My grandfather trained me well now I can't really get my adrenaline flowing, but if you think you can get it flowing again, then I will call this a fight. Akamaru. Barf. Akamaru came rocketing towards Naruto who dodged and then weaved hand signs. Pain. Raikan ka no jutsu. Fire style. Dragon flame Catawal. That's Madara Chihaz jutsu. I told you my grandfather taught me well. Just then Naruto heard the chirping of birds and Naruto backhanded Kiba with Susanao and saw Kakashi with lightning with his hand. Urkiri. Kakashi roared, lightning blade, Naruto saw the jutsu with his Sharingan and copied the technique, and with the technique copied understanding bloomed Naruto charged and slammed the palm of his Susanao between the two, separating them with force of the impact. Sorry Kakashi Haddock, but I can't let you kill Zabuza Sensei. Why Naruto what has he done to inspire such loyalty in you? He treated me like a person instead of some monster. Naruto your village misses you Hinata misses you come back. Just then Naruto and the others heard a slow asshole clap as Gato and an army of thugs came into view. Well, 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 looks the Karitakur no Kijin was just a baby demon after all. Seems you were right Naruto. Zabuza said as he and the real Haku and Fu came jumping down from a lookout tower. H how? Never heard of clones. Naruto asked Mater off factly. You really should keep shinobi guards especially if you plan to betray your employees. Naruto shook his head. Kakashi stand down we are no longer your enemies. Naruto channeled Chakra into his Susanao and fired off a string of Yutsaka Mangatamas at the thug army, obliterating them in seconds. Can someone please explain what's going on Kiba shouted. We knew of Gato's plan to betray us, so I made some Mokuten bunchins to fool him, but I guess my Haku clone went overboard sorry, but the Ichiha's pretty banged up, but he'll live. How did you know? I spied on him and figured it out. Naruto said matter of factly. But now you said you wanted me to return to Konoha, but I will only do so under one condition. If Zabuza, Haku and Fu can join me there. I'll talk to Siratobi sama By the way I raided Gato's vault and I'm giving the money to the Nami no Kuni as recompense for all the damage I've caused. Tazuna's eyes welled up with tears. Time skipped two weeks. Naruto and the others had helped finish the bridge, then the group of twelve walked back Hinata looked at Naruto, who was walking an aura of power radiating off him. You know Hinata if you want to talk to me just say something I'm not that hard to approach. Naruto joked. Well sorry mister. I'm Madara Chihaz fucking grandson it's just this is the first time I've seen you in 8 years and you've grown handsome. Why do you care about some nobody when a perfect hunk of man like Sasu Kun right here? Sakura asked. Shut up Sakura unless you want to be ashes before we get back to Konoha. Naruto growled. So Naruto what's Madara like? Kiba asked. He was a kind and caring man but a slave driver when he wanted to be and no matter how many times I think about him, I have nothing but admiration for him. He was the first and the last family I had in this world and now he's gone. Naruto got a sad look on his face. Oh by demand you teach me everything Madara taught you. Sasuke said. I won't dance with you Sasuke Chiha. You are far too arrogant my grandfather would be ashamed to know he's related to someone like you. How dare you I'm an elite among the Achiha. No, you are a weakling your chakra levels are barely above Chunin level. Dancing with you would be absurd and pointless, and this is the last I'll say on the subject. How dare Naruto shut Sasuke up by blasting him with an intense focused blast of Kai. If you insist on dancing with me then I will kill you plan and simple. Sasuke made the wise decision not to say anything but simply grunted, and they continued walking. Time skip 8 hours later. Naruto Haku, Kakashi, Fu and Zabuza were in Siratobi's office, while well said man's eyes were welling up with tears. Naruto you're alive. Saratobi said as he hugged his surrogate grandson. I'm alive, Jiji but not for long if the civilian council has anything to say about it. Naruto said. Where were you these past eight years? I was with my grandfather, he trained me in everything I know, but now he's dead. Naruto got a sad look on his face. Who is your grandfather? Madara Chiha. What? Saratobi yelled. Calm down Jiji I can prove it. Naruto activated his Sharingan, then channeled more chakra shifting it to his Iron No Manjikam Sharingan. What is that? My I no Manjikam Sharingan I unlocked it when killed Madara Jiji. That's impossible Madara died fighting Hashirama-sama. That's just it he didn't die when he fought Hashirama. He survived the battle and had a child with his late wife, my grandmother, Rikinamikas. Of course that's why Jiraiya placed the seal on him it was to protect him if people learned that Madara had a son they would stop at nothing to kill him. So you knew about the seals on Tusan. Yes Jiraiya told me what they did, but why didn't you send a message to me telling me you were safe? Because Jiji cut me off from all outside contact and focused on all of my training he made me strong. How did you leave the village undetected? Zetsu took me to Jiji. Now Naruto I believe you stated you wanted to join the village. 
I did but only under the condition that Tsubuza Sensei, Haku and Fu are allowed to join too. Naruto I can't offer sanction to Nuke Nin. If you let them join I'll tell you a secret on how to defeat paperwork. Saratobi tossed Fu, Haku, and Zabuza forehead protectors so fast they barely had time to react and grab the forehead protectors. Tell me. Saratobi shook Naruto's shoulders. It's actually quite simple, when confronted with two enemies you can't turn your back on it's better to look in two directions at once so they can't sneak up on you. Naruto says cryptically. Realm of the Afterlife. The Ami and CJ were playing shogi against one another when allowed. <laughs> was heard from down in the mortal plane. Naruto just told old Saratobi the secret of paperwork didn't he? Yami asks, yep. CJ responds placing his silver general up with continuing with his climbing silver stratagem. Think we should do something about it? Nope. Back with Saratobi. Saratobi's eyes widen in shock, then he walks back to his desk and opens it and pulls out a small wooden plank, with the words when you find the answer to something simple hit here, the plank showed a small target board with a chibi jiraiya holding it. Stupid, 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 stupid. Saratobi banks his head on the plank over and over again in understanding. Shadow clones of course. Saratobi says looking at the evil pile of paperwork. Ha. Ha. You fiends I have the instrument of your demise at last. Saratobi cackles evilly, the secretary heard the laugh from outside and thought. I think the Hokage has finally lost it. She thinks, back with Naruto and the others, after Saratobi had calmed down he looked at Zabuza. Zabuza, Fu since you're both Nuke Nin you are both on a one month probation period, but you can participate in the upcoming Chunin exams if you want. Are you saying I'm a Genin? Zabuza growled. No I meant was you are now a squad of shinobi with you, as Jounin Sensei the probation wears of at the time of Chunin exam recommendation time. If you want to recommend them I won't stop you in the meantime you four can't participate in mission until after the Chunin exams. Par enough. Zabuza shrugged. You are now Team 11 of Konoha. Hi Hokage-sama. Naruto Haku, Fu and Zabuza bowed to Saratobi, then they left the office. I'm gonna go train with Kurama a bit. Naruto said. Are you sure it's Kurama you're training with I saw the way you were aiming that Haika Kinoichi. Zabuza said stifling a laugh at Naruto's blush. SH shut up. Naruto growled then here and off towards the Haika clan compound. Chapter 6. Chunin exams part 1. Time skip one month later. Naruto, Fu, and Haku were standing the field of training ground 11 as they waited for Zabuza and a few seconds Zabuza air of in a mist shunshin. Alright you three it's time for the Chunin exams go show them what you're made of. Zabuza said. Hi Zabuza sensei. Naruto, Fu, and Haku bowed, and then they ran off toward the academy. Naruto, Fu, and Haku arrive at the academy and see a bunch of students gathered around a room that says 301. Naruto looks at his teammates with a really look on his face. Just then a boy in a green jumpsuit is punched back someone from the group of Genin speaks up. Let us in we need to register for the exams. The Chunin exams are real challenging kids like you should just quit. One of the Genin guard says. Please let us through. Ten Ten's voice calls from the front of the crowd. Naruto looked at his teammates. In Jutsu let's just move on. Naruto said, Fu and Haku nodded. Hey where do you think you kids are going? Izumo said. I have no time to dance with weaklings such as yourself. Naruto said flaring his chakra. Dance? What are you a ballerina? Kitetsu sneered. I'm done playing games with you. Naruto, Fu and Haku keep walking up the stairs, just then Naruto heard Sasu call out. Drop the Jinjutsu this is the second floor. So you noticed? Izumo said. Sakura you must have noticed first right? Ghhh. Naruto cursed. That ego of his is going to be the death of us. Of of course. Sakura said. This is the second floor anyway you'd have to be an idiot not to notice. Sakura turned to Naruto with an eat shit grin on her face. Even a moron like Naruto would have noticed. Naruto ignored her and with his teammates walked upstairs. Naruto Baka don't you ignore me. Naruto, Haku and Fu walked up to the third floor and they saw Zabuza standing there. But you saw through the Jinjutsu, and you've all made your way here now go on and show them your power. Yes sir. Naruto, Fu, and Haku said simultaneously then they walk into the room and was welcomed by a blast of wide varieties of Kai, but Naruto, Fu and Haku brushed it off, but Naruto got an evil idea and he activated his Sharingan. If you don't stop trying to intimate me I'll have to show you the true power of Madara Chiha's grandson, I wonder how long any one of you would last against me in a dance. Naruto said as he unleashed a huge torrent of Kai flooring the other contestants. Naruto kun stop doing that you'll give them heart attacks. Hinata said as she, Shino and Kiba walked into to view. What can I say? You play with fire and you'll get burned. Naruto stopped channeling his Kai. Did you see that? 
one of the contestants as he recovered from the blast of Kai. Yeah I'm sure as hell not taking these exams if he's a part of them. His teammate responded. Count me out too. Several other contestants left the room one by one as they were terrified of Naruto's power. Did you feel that Han? Akatsuki said to his armored friend. Yeah. Han responded. He's Madara's grandson I'm definitely gonna want to fight him. Kuritsuchi said. What better way to make Madara pay for what he did to Jiji than killing his grandson? I wouldn't if I were you, according to my friend he's got the kickbee inside of him. Han said. I'm still gonna fight him and I'm gonna win. Across the room three Kumo shinobi were watching the interaction with the Iwa shinobi. What do you say Yujito still think these exams will be boring? Carrie asked her female teammate. Not with that hunk here I don't. Yujito said as she licked her lips. If Yujito falls for that kickbee brat this could spark a war with Kumo, and if that happens the fourth great shinobi war might start, and if he unleashes the kickbee it'll be a disaster. Amoy starts rambling on and on. Shut up. Kamui punches Amoy on the head. Just then Sasuke and the others walked in. Sasuke was nursing a bruised cheek. Sasuke-kun. A blonde-haired blur tackled Sasuke. Sasuke-kun is mine so back off Eno pig. Sakura shouts. Like hell he is forehead. Eno shouts back. Oh my god do they ever shut up. Tell me about a kid I thought my fangirls were bad, but these two are intolerable. You had fangirls. I was a very popular kid when I was younger. Ha ha. Naruto laughed. Oh shut up. You guys are attracting too much attention. So you're the nine rookies that just graduated from the academy, right? You're fooling around with those cute faces geez, this isn't a field trip. Who the hell are you to tell us that? Ino glares at the boy. I'm Kabuto Yakushi. Look around you everyone, but Naruto looks around. The gen and gather for the exams are all glaring at the group and unleashing a bit of Kai at the group of ten. The ones behind you are from the Omegakur no Sado, they have a short temper. Everyone is nervous for the exams, I warn all of you so that you won't get picked on. I guess it can't be helped though, since you are just rookies who don't know anything, it makes me remember the old me. Kabuto looks at Naruto. However your friend in the red armor seems to have the right idea that or he isn't paying attention. Kabuto-san was it? Sakura asks. Yeah. Is this your second time, then? No, this will be my seventh time. Immediately alarm bells start going off in Naruto's head. You probably have a lot of information on the people here. Naruto says playing dumb. So smart in fact I have 200 cards with information on everyone here. Kabuto pulls out a stack of cards and places them on the ground. Kabuto takes the first one off the top of the pile. It looks white, but to get the information from this card. Kabuto starts spinning the card. What are you doing? Sakura asks. It's made so that you can't view it without my chakra, like this. Kabuto applies chakra to the card and a small map with a bar graph projected above it, with the largest coming from the land of fire. What kind of information is that? Sakura looks confused. The exam's total number of examinees and countries participating, it also has the number of participants from each hidden village. Let me ask, why do you think we do the Chunin exams together? Kabuto asks all the nine rookies look at him in silence, while Chinjai munches on some chips. First, it's to deepen the friendly relationships with the other countries. Next, it's to heighten the level of the ninja, that is what they say. That is what they say. Kiba repeats confused. Yes, the real purpose is to confirm the level of the ninja in each adjacent country to try and balance out the power. Our balance A. Naruto says looking at Kabuto. Why do they go through such a troublesome task? Shikamaru asks. If they don't do that, the weak countries will be invaded and dominated by the strong ones. So they check and restrain each other's powers, that is my guess anyway. Kabuto answers, just then Sasuke walks forward with a determined look on his face. Are there any cards there that have detailed personal information? Sasuke asks. Yes, is there someone that interests you? Yeah there are. The information of this exam's examinees are not perfect, but I've burned and saved them. They include information about the nine of you as well. Tell me whatever you know about the people you know that interest you, I'll look it up for you. Ara from the Sun Agakur, Rock Lee from Kanoha and Naruto Uchiha of Kanoha. Oh, you know their names that is no fun. Kabuto swipes his hand over the deck and then Kabuto holds up three cards in front of them. Show me. Sasuke demands. Based on the information he has I can determine what to look out for. Naruto thinks looking at Kabuto's little display. First up is Rock Lee. Kabuto says and then he channels Chakra into the card and Rock Lee's information appears as well as two graphs dictating his overall stats and number of completed missions. He is one year older than you, his mission experience includes 20 D-ranked missions and 11 C-ranks the squad leader is Might Guy. His hand-to-hand -hand combat skills have increased dramatically in this past year, but his other skills are terrible. He got everyone's attention last year as a skilled rookie genin, but he didn't take the Chunin exam, like you this is his first time taking it. Thank you Captain Obvious. Naruto rolls his eyes. 
his team is composed of Tenten and Niji Haikta. Next let's see Gara of the Desert. Kabuto channels his chakra into the second card and Gara's stats appear. Interesting his skills are unknown mostly that means Mr. Ninja Info Guy doesn't know everything. Karama notes. But I can tell you he holds my insane little brother the one-tailed Shukaku. His mission experience is 8C ranks and this is amazing he did a B rank mission as a genin. He is a foreign ninja and it's his first time taking the exam, so I don't have any more info on him, however it seems that he has returned from all his missions unharmed. Though this reeks of Shukaku's influence, if I were to hazard a guess I would say this Gara kid controls sand for both offense and defense, and, like yours truly, he has a very strong self-preservation instinct, so odds are the sand will spring up to defend him. Thank you Karama. Naruto smiles at his inner biju, he did a B-rank mission as a genin and was unharmed. Shikamaru asks shocked. Kabuto takes another card from his deck and channels more chakra into in, and a picture of Naruto shows up. Naruto Ichiha wielder of the Iron no Manjikam said to be the grandson of Madara Ichiha himself, but other than that I've got nothing he's been well hidden for quite some time. Kabuto said. Sasu grimaced at the lack of information on Naruto. Dust you wait though but I'll get that info on you yet. Sasu thought bitterly. Just then Kabuto takes another card and channels chakra into it and the minimap pops up again. Anoha, Suna, Iwa, Kumo, Aim, Kusa, Taki, Odo, this year, many talented genin from these hidden villages have come here to take the exams. The Hidden Sound Village is a village of a small country that was just made recently, so I don't have much info on them. Either way, all of them are powerful hidden villages. So all the people here are all Sakura trails off. Right it's not only Lee, Gar or Naruto, all the people here are the top elites chosen from each country, I can assure you this won't be easy. Naruto starts chuckling silently and starts shaking, Fu notices this, and her unease starts to grow rapidly. Even Naruto, as nervous maybe should try and help him. Fu thinks in dismay, however just as she is about to say something Naruto turns to the other participating genin and unleashes a torrent of killer intent, smiling like a madman. Excellent this seems like a declaration of war. Naruto's eyes starts glowing with glee, then he holds out his hand and clenches it into a fist. I can't wait to crush you all. Instantly every genin with the exception of Gara, Haku, Fu, Hinata, Han and Yujito start sweating up a storm and a few even collapse under Naruto's power. Within the crowd there are three Odo genin who were looking over at where Kabuto was. Did you hear that? The one with a headpiece similar to Tabarama's asks. They said that the Atagakur is a minor village in a small country. I'm hurt. The one wrapped in bandages responds. Let's play with them a little, then. The only girl says smirk. Yeah, they spoke as if we're just leftover ninja, let's make him add this into his data ninja from the Atagakur are somewhat cruel. Shall we? First boy asks. Let's. The second responds, then the three of them rush over to the rookie nine, then come flying in at Kabuto, the first boy leaps into the air and throws a couple of kunai at Kabuto, who dodges them with ease, when the second comes in to strike swings his right arm which Kabuto dodges with ease. Then the lenses of Kabuto's glasses shatter. So it's a sound wave attack interesting. Note to self, apply sound proofing seals to the ear area which can activate at will and deactivate at will. Naruto thinks, I see so that's what kind of attack it was. Kabuto takes off his shattered glasses. Sasuke runs forward confused. What is going on? You definitely dodged it so why did your glass Sasuke says in confusion. It must have hit his nose. That's what happens for trying to look cool. Shikamaru responds. Just then Kabuto's eyes widen in shock as a wave of nausea overcomes him and his vision blurs. Then Kabuto collapses to his knees and throws up. He threw up. Kiba says looking in shock. Kabuto-san. Sakura cries out in concern. Everyone looks shocked except for Shino who doesn't really have an expression. Sakura and Kiba run over to Kabuto. Hey, Kabuto are you alright? Kiba asks concerned. Yeah I'm okay. Kabuto responds. Really? Sakura asks. You're not as good as I thought for a veteran who took the exam four years running. Dosu says. Write this in your card Zaku says. The three from Itagakur will definitely become Chunin. Lee what do you think of that attack? Niji asks. There was no problem in dodging it. There must be some sort of trick. Just then a huge plume of smoke erupts from the front of the classroom as a deep voice growls out. Quiet down you punks. Everyone in the room turns their attention to the new arrival. When the smoke clears a bunch of Chunin in grey uniforms with a man with a black trench coat with scars running down his face standing in front. Sorry to keep you waiting, I am the examiner of the first test of the Chunin exam, Marino Ibiki. Everyone looks on with a twinge of fear, not only from Ibiki's intimidating presence, but some were still recovering from Naruto's killer intent. Then Ibiki points to the three Odo Genin. You three from the Atagakur don't think you can do anything you want before the exam. I'm sorry, I was excited, since this is my first exam. Dosu says. 
this is a good time to say this you are not allowed to fight each other during the exam unless given permission by the examiners and even if permission is given, you are not allowed to kill the other. Pigs who go against me will fail immediately. Understand. Zaku laughs at Ibiki's statement. This exam seems so soft and easy. Zaku says. We will now begin the first exam of the Chunin exams. Am I being ignored? Zaku thinks to himself glaring at the examiner. Turn in your applications, take one of the number tags, and sit where the number tells you to. Ibiki says holding up a small card with a big black number 1 on it. Then we will pass out the papers for the written exam. Braid a paper test fan fucking tastic. Naruto groans inwardly. Do you think this is bad you should actually pay attention to the amount of papers on the Hokage's desk on any given day he has to fill out and sign all of them, and that usually takes up most of his day. Well with a cage bunch and I can get that paperwork done faster. When everyone sits down the chunin that accompanied Ibiki sit down in chairs at the edges of the room while holding clipboards. Naruto looks around the room using the chameleon he has positioned on the ceiling and notices that everyone is separated from their teammates. Let's do our best to not a chan. Naruto says smiling at her. Right Naruto-kun. Hinata says smiling back. Alright this first exam has a few important rules. Ibiki calls out from the front of the class. I will not accept any questions, so listen carefully. Rules. Won't accept any questions. Just what is this guy's angle? Sakura thinks. First rule is you all are given 10 points at the start, the written exam consists of 10 questions, and each is worth 1 point, this test is a deduction based test, if you get one problem wrong, you will get 1 point deducted. So getting all of them wrong will get you 0 points. Kiba thinks. Second rule, the pass fail decision will be determined by your team's total points. Wait. Your team's total points. What? Shut up. Ibiki shouts. There is a reason for this so shut up and listen. A reason? Sakura thinks. Now that you know, let's move on to the next rule. If an examiner determines that you cheated or do something similar during the test, each action will cause you to lose two points. A few students react in shock. In other words, there will be people who will be forced to leave this place without their tests being graded. So there's a way to lose points besides getting the written problems wrong. Those who try to cheat without thinking carefully will only hurt themselves. We'll check you at any time. Izumo says smiling dot. You are all trying to become Chunin, if you are ninja act like a first-rate one. At Ibiki's next words the puzzle pieces in Naruto's head snap into place. The point of this test is to cheat without getting caught, very clever Ibiki-san, very clever. Naruto thinks. Also if anyone in a team gets a zero everyone on that team will fail. The last problem will be given 45 minutes after the exam begins. You have one hour to take your tests. Ibiki watches the clock until it hits the 3.30 mark. Begin. Everyone begins writing on their paper answering the questions, Naruto looks at the first question, which is to decipher a carefully written code. Oh this is child's play I remember what Jiji taught me about codes. Naruto thought then he looked at the code and deciphered it in seconds. Then Naruto looked at the next question and once again answered it with ease, Naruto did the same for the first five questions when he reached one that not even Naruto could answer. Fuck. Just who wrote these questions. It's impossible to answer wait oh duh. Naruto activates his Sharingan and covers it with a Jinjutsu and copies the person in front of him, thanks to the small mirror that Haku created to cheat. Just then a kunai goes flying past Naruto and hits the test behind him, the genin stands up and shouts out. What is the meaning of this? You screwed up five times. You fail. Izumo responds. But the genin's eyes shrink, teammates of his, get out of here. The genin's teammates get up and walk out, and after a couple of seconds he follows them. Number 23, fail, number 43 and 27, fail. Kitetsu says. Then Genin are dropped one by one, and their teammates are kicked out as well. Over the next several minutes teams walk out, and after 40 minutes, 24 teams remain, and everyone starts cheating in attempt to figure out each other. After a few minutes Kankuro raises his hand and leaves for the bathroom and gets the answers from his puppet, when he comes back Ibiki smiles. Have fun playing with your dolls. Ibiki smiles at Kankuro's narrowed eyes. Eventually the clock hits the 45 minute mark and Ibiki calls out. Pencils down. Everyone looks up in shock. I will now give the 10th question. Took you long enough. Sasu thinks smirking. The last question finally. Sakura thinks in excitement. Yes, but before that, there's one thing I must say, there is a special rule for this last question. I will now explain, this is a hopeless rule. A hopeless rule. Naruto smirks. First, you are all going to choose if you wish to take this 10th question or not. Jews. Tamari asks confused. So what happens if we don't take the 10th question? If you choose not to take it, your points will be reduced to zero, in other words you and your team fail. A kid in the back of the room shouts out. Of course we going to take it. Here is the other rule. What not another rule cut the crap Shamaro. Damn it. 
Sakura thinks in exasperation. If you choose to take it and you get it wrong, you will lose the privilege to take the Chunin exams forever. What kind of idiotic rule is that? Kiba shouts out. There are Jen in here who have taken these exams before. Ibiki starts laughing. You were unlucky, this year I am the rule. That is why I gave you the option of quitting. Those who are not confident can choose not to take it and take the exams next year or the year after that. Ibiki starts laughing again. Now let's begin those who don't want to take it raise your hands. Very clever he sadist, this is psychological warfare, but two can play this game. Naruto thinks standing up with a determined look in his eyes. No way am I giving up even if I have to stay a genin I will become the greatest genin hokage. I never go back on my word, that's my nindo. After Naruto's declaration the examiners all nodded Ibiki smiling, and he nods back. In that case all those of you here pass. Everyone looks shocked. 3 2 1. What? Everyone shouts shocked but Naruto, Fu and Haku stay silent. So those questions were all for nothing. Tamari shouts. They served their purpose they weeded out those who are unfit to be chunin. The point of this test was to gauge how good you are at information gathering. In the shinobi world if you are caught stealing information you will be torture for information on your village. Ibiki takes off his bandana show scars on his head. That looks bad, but I've had worse. Naruto thinks shaking his head. Still torture is torture and it sucks, however it looks like lighting catalyzed a wounds man that looks like it hurt. Just then a lump of black cloth smashes through the window and a banner appears behind the new figure which reads. The second examiner the sexy and single Anko then the person says, everyone there is no time to be happy. I am the second examiner, Anko Mitarashi. Let's go to the next exam. Anko thrusts her fist in the air. Follow me. The room is dead quiet and everyone has the WTF face. Ibiki steps out from behind the banner. Grasp the atmosphere. He says mentally face palming. 69 people, Ibiki you let 23 teams pass. The first exam bust have been too soft. It looks like there are a lot of excellent students this time, especially the blonde. After everyone left Ibiki walked around and picked up the test and he saw Chibi Naruto with a speech bubble. Keep an eye on Kabuto he has access to too much classified information, fluffy butt says he reeks of snakes and if you're as smart as I think you are you know what that means. Ibiki's eyes widen in shock and he ran off to Saratobi's office. Chapter 7. The Forest of Death. The 23 remaining teams and Anko arrive at training ground 44 Naruto looks at the forest with a hint of curiosity. Welcome you maggots to the Forest of Death. Anko announced with a gleeful look. Well this looks like it'll be fun. Naruto says as he smiles looking at the forest. Just then a kunai flicks past Naruto's cheek and blood comes from the wound and Anko licks the blood from his cheek. Tough guys like you usually end up dead within the first day. I was trained with Madara Ichiha himself if you think this will scare me you're in for a whole new experience. Just the Anko turns around with another kunai in her hand and a kusa ninja with a long tongue. Here is your kunai miss. The grass ninja says. Oh thank you. Anko smiles. This is bad the chakra radiating off this guy is insane. Naruto thinks as he is looking at the ninja. However don't stand behind me like that. That is unless you want to die young. Anko takes both her kunai and the grass ninja pulls her tongue back in. Well I get itchy when I see blood, also my precious hair was cut, so I got a little excited, sorry. The grass ninja walks away. Anyway in order for you to participate in the exams you need to sign these warrants that free the hidden leaf from any responsibility or liability, should you die in the forest. What do you mean death? Some of the participants asks. Just what I said, when you enter the forest you will start out with either a heaven or an earth scroll, you will need to get both scrolls to get into the tower at the center. Don't open the scrolls or else, well let's just say it will be fun for me if you do. Anko smiles dangerously. This exam will last 5 days. What will we do about food? Chimja yells out. Scrounge some up, this forest is a treasure box of nature. Anko's smile widens. But be careful as some of them are poisonous, and also you might find that you will be hunting only to end up hunted. Anko brings every team to a gate and then after 5 minutes a buzzer goes off and the gates open up and everyone rushes in. After a few minutes Naruto looks at his teammates. Alright we got an earth scroll so we need a heaven scroll I'll take the scroll and we'll set a trap, but odds are we won't even need to do that my bet is that the team from Awagakur will come after me due to my connection with Madara Jiji. Fu looked at Naruto. What did your grandfather do to Iwa to piss them off so much? Fu asked, I'll show you the truth. Naruto activated his Sharingan and in a second the world spun and Fu and Haku were looking at a young Madara in front of two shinobi one who looked like a mummy, the other was a midget. Why? The younger Loki asked. This is not the agreement. Hashirama Sama said, there is no alliance. From here on, you will obey Konoha. And never, ever say that shinobi's name around me. Madara said as he channeled chakra into his eyes and his Susanao rose up. Susanao. 
Madara smashed the temple he stood before them, Unoki grabbed a rock and then stood up and faced Madara. You want to continue dancing, but there is no strength in your steps. Madara casted a Jinjutsu on Lenoki causing him to drop the rock and collapse to the ground. Naruto then ended the Jutsu and the world returned to normal. Whoa your grandfather is strong even I've heard of Rumtenba no Lenoki. Haku said. Lenoki wasn't in his prime back then, but he was using only a fraction of his true power, I must admit I've never seen Madara Jiji's true power because he was an old man when I met him, but he is powerful. Naruto said. Man if I were an Iwa Shinobi I'd be after your hide, they'd want revenge. You're damn right we do. A female voice called out, and then Kuritsuchi, Akatsuchi and Han landed in the clearing. I'll kill you Madara's grandson and you will fall into despair in your last moments. Well then. Naruto draws his gun by. Let's dance. There's that arrogance you're just like your grandfather. It's not arrogance if I can back up my words with power. Naruto unleashes a huge torrent of Kai and Chakra. I can't lose as long as I have that Tsuchi no Ishii behind me. Power is not will it is the phenomenon of physically making things happen. Why you? Kuritsuchi charged in a blind rage and attacked Naruto with a furry of Tejutsu, but Naruto countered easily with a bored expression on his face. When Kuritsuchi noticed something that infuriated her to no end. Why haven't you activated your Sharingan? Because I don't need it to see though your attacks. The Sharingan is only a tool that does not make the user invincible, if you can force me to activate my Sharingan, then I will activate it, however I promise that our dance will be short if I do activate my Sharingan. You arrogant brat. Kuritsuchi jumped back and started weaving hand signs. Yoten. Sakajum no Jutsu. Lava style. Quick slime Jutsu. Kuritsuchi spits out a huge blast of silver lava at Naruto. Child's play. Naruto scoffs and begins to weave hand signs. Katen. Nkamasitsu. Naruto exhaled a huge fire wave evaporating the wave of lava due the chakra behind the attack. I'm done playing games with you. Kuritsuchi claps her hands together. Jinten. Genkai Hakuri no Jutsu. Particle style. Atomic dismantling jutsu. Kuritsuchi opens her hands and square was spread between her hands. Then she launches it at Naruto who couldn't dodge. Naruto. Fu and Haku shouted. I did it. I killed Madara's grandson. Kuritsuchi laughed as she stood there laughing like a maniac. Just then a slow clap rung out and Naruto walked out from behind a tree smiling. You really are Lenoki's granddaughter to be able to use his jintan, but it doesn't matter to me. How? I just saw you die with my own eyes. What you just killed was a Mokuten Bunshin used by Hashirama back in the day, it's well made only my visual prowess and my grandfathers could tell the difference. Naruto looked at Kuritsuchi with a bored expression. You're dead. Kuritsuchi clapped her hands together again. Enough. Naruto scoffed and slammed his hands together in the snake seal. Mokuten. Mikuryu no Jutsu. Naruto held out his hand and his flesh formed a wooden dragon which wrapped around Kuritsuchi and the Jintan attack fizzled in her hands. H.H. How. This is Hashirama's wooden dragon, which he used to hold down the kick be long ago. It can suppress chakra and even prevents chakra absorbing, so you have no power against me. How do you have this much strength? Because I don't hide behind a family name I fight with my own strength, and I train myself to the brink every day my grandfather didn't become feared throughout the shinobi nations by sitting on his ass. You damn bastard. Kuritsuchi growled at Naruto. I'm ending this now. Naruto made the horse hand sign. Katen. Nkamakyaku. Oten. Dorakeki. Earth style. Mud wall, hand shouted exhaling a huge wall of mud and earth. Naruto's wave of flame collided with the wall, but the wall held strong and stopped the jutsu. You dance well Gobi let's see if you can dance with me longer than the woman could. Let's go Gobi. Han thought to his biju. Right pup. Kakuo responded and channeled her chakra though her jinch cricky. Then Han sprouted five tails of chakra. Garama shall we? I can only give you a little bit of charka as we don't have the key to the seal, but against Kakuo, you might need your Manjikum Sharingan. I won't enslave Biju I'm kinder than that I can't treat Kakuo any different than you, that would make me a hypocrite. You really are a kind-hearted kid in that case I'll loan you some chakra, it's time I teach Kakuo who's the stronger one here me or her. Kurama channeled his chakra through the seal, but held back the bloodlust allowing Naruto to reach the fourth tail with no trouble. Let's go Kakuo. Naruto charged. The Greek Kurama. Han shouted back charging Naruto who exchanged blows with Han eventually, after 10 minutes of fighting Naruto caught Han's fist, and instantly he was transported to a white and gold landscape, and he saw Kakua with Han on her head. Naruto looked behind him and Kurama was sitting there. It's been a while Kurama. Kakua said, yeah not since the time Jiji died. Kurama responded, Kurama where are we? Naruto asked, a Biju psychic plan where the Biju can meet and converse I'm surprised we are here, I thought we couldn't reach here with a seal blocking me off from your charka. It probably has something to do with Han here. Kakuo said. 
since your Jinch Kriki and mine were duking it out with our chakra, we probably established a deep enough connection with their charka to be dragged here. That's actually a very real possibility. Kurama said with a pondering look on his face. This isn't like you Kurama why are you getting along with your host so well? The kid grew on me. I actually respect this kid despite who his grandfather is. What's wrong with my grandpa? Naruto asked. You know damn well what Madara did to me. Okay nice and what am I missing? Kakuo asked. The kid's grandfather, Madara Chiha, used his damn Sharingan to control me, and he forced me to attack Hashirama, which caused me to get sealed in Hashirama's wife, then in the kid's mother, and now the kid himself. I haven't had freedom to stretch my legs in almost 100 years. Coupled with the fact that I'm missing my yin chakra, I'm rather pissed off about that seeing as it is sealed inside the Shinigami's stomach, I can't get it back. Kurama folded his tails under his chin signifying his unhappiness. Any idea how to get it back Kurama? Naruto asked his friend, Kurama responded with bursting out laughing. This continues for several minutes until Naruto grew a tick mark which slowly grew in size as Kurama continued to laugh. I think the pup is serious Kurama. Kakuo said. Kurama stopped laughing and looked at Naruto who, despite the tick mark on his face, was completely straight-faced. Why you're serious? Took you long enough. Naruto said his tick mark fading. Well according to legend there is a mask that is said to allow you to take control of the Shinigami and force it to slice open its own stomach, which could release your father's soul in my chakra. Not a great option I'm sure there is another option. You could just ask. A voice called out and then CJ appeared in a swirl of white energy. Can I have Kurama's yin chakra back please? Sure why not CJ said then he took his hand and reached into his mouth and rummaged around a bit, then pulled out a slightly dark Kurama. That was way too easy. Naruto sweat drops. Hey there sexy. Kurama said to his yin half. Right back at you. Kurama's yin half responded. Oh just fuse already. Naruto shouted his tick mark growing back. Who's the brat? Kurama's yin half asked. Arjunch Kriki. Kurama said. You speak highly of him did something happen when I wasn't looking. Madara's grandson is nothing like that bastard of a man. You're Madara's grandson. Yeah you got a problem with that. Naruto asked. Why are we working with a descendant of that bastard of a man? Kurama's yin half asked. He's the reason you're here, plus he's actually not bad when you get to know him. Kurama said. Damn right I'm not. Naruto said Kurama smashed him on the back of the head with one of his tails. You're still a brat don't forget that. Kurama said. Well if we're fusing let's get this over with. Kurama's yin half said. It'll be fun to be back at full strength. Who's yawn? Kurama and his yin half stood on their hind legs and then balanced on one foot, then held their paws out facing away from each other, then they started walking towards each other, then they touch index claws on both hands. Fusion. Fusion. Ha. Then in a blinding flash of light one Kurama stood there while everyone looked at him with sweat drops on their heads. Was that necessary? CJ asked. No, not really. Kurama laughed. Then why did you do that? Kakuo shouts. Felt like it. Kurama said nonchalantly. You're an idiot. CJ said as he face palmed. Who's the king of the Biju? Who could lock you in his stomach for all eternity? Fuck it, you win. Always do. CJ said then he vanished. By the way Naruto I thought I should tell you that Lenoki is planning an invasion of Konoha along with Orochimaru and Suna. Han said gaining Naruto's attention. Let him try, I'll remind him why he should fear the name Madara Chia. I was supposed to get involved and use Kakuo's power, but now that you have Kurama back to full strength, I'm going to rethink my part in this game. Well seeing as I can utilize Susanao to its fullest that's a good idea. Anyway it was fun meeting you Naruto. Just then the gold world vanished and when Naruto opened his eyes he was still holding Han's fist in his hand. Han get me out of here. Kuritsuchi shouted. Sorry brother. Naruto whispered. Mokuten. Makuryu no Jutsu. Again the wooden dragon rose up and wrapped around Han and Kakuo's chakra was slowly absorbed by the dragon. Naruto then turned to Akatsuchi who was sweating bullets at this point. Hand over your scroll and you'll live. Naruto said unleashing a torrent of focused Kai. Akatsuchi started vomiting at the sheer volume of Kai and slowly reached into his pocket and pulled out the heaven scroll and rolled it to Naruto. Good now you can get your teammates and get the hell out of here and if you attack me again I'll kill you. Naruto said then he looked at his teammates. Let's go to the tower in the center there we'll rest for the remainder of the exam. Right. Fu and Haku said then the three of them ran off towards the tower when suddenly Naruto sensed a very high chakra level flare itself into existence. Who? Haku take the scrolls and go to the tower I have to check something out. What is it? Haku asked. I just sensed a very high chakra level, either there is another Jinch Kriki here or we have a problem. But what about you? Fu asked. I'm gonna check this out don't worry I'll be fine. Naruto handed the two scrolls to his teammates and then ran off towards the chakra signature. After a few minutes of leaping through the forest Naruto saw a man with a pale white face and instantly recognized him. 
That's Orochimaru. Kurama said. I know Kurama. Let's show him our power. Right. Naruto leapt forward and to his shock, he saw Anko kneeling on the tree branch clutching her shoulder. Why did you come Anko says glaring. We haven't seen each other in a long time, but you're treating me so coldly. Orochimaru said smiling. Did you come to assassinate Hokage-sama? No, no, well not yet anyway, I don't have enough men for that. So I was planning on reserving some outstanding ones from this village. Anko clutches her neck again and collapsed to her knees. I just gave someone that same curse seal as a present a while ago, there is a boy I want. That boy is going to die before he serves you. True there is only a 10% chance he'll survive, but he might be like you and not die. You seem quite interested in this boy. Anko sneers, then Arachimaru reaches out and touches her face. Are you jealous? Are you still angry that I used you and then cast you off like trash? Unlike you, he seems to be an excellent ninja after all. He is the boy that carries the abilities of an Acha. His body is beautiful and he is capable of becoming my successor. If he survives, things will become quite interesting. Whatever you do, don't cancel this exam, three from my village are under your care. Naruto had seen enough and started weaving hand signs. Urkiri. Naruto roared, then he charged Orochimaru with a lightning blade in his palm Sharingan ablaze, and Orochimaru jumped out of the way, but Naruto managed to slice off his left arm due to Naruto's pure speed. Who the hell is that? Orochimaru thought then he saw Naruto Sharingan ablaze and glaring. Ah Naruto-kun I've heard you were Madara's grandson, but I think that proves it. You're dead Orochimaru you can't stop me. Oh you'll do nicely boy. Orochimaru licked his lips. No thanks I don't swing that way, but I'm sure your little medic friend does. So you know about Kabuto, you're more perceptive than I thought. Well seeing as he has access to information that any normal genin should, even though I know more about you than you know about me, but that's because I have a spy even greater than Kabuto. He and Kabuto must swap notes some time. Orochimaru replied sarcastically. Irrelevant of what you think, you're outmatched here Snake Sanin. Is that what you think? Orochimaru snickers then he starts weaving hand signs. Katen. Nkakak no Jutsu. Fire Style. Fireball Jutsu. Suiten. Mizurapa. Water Style. Wild Water Wave, Naruto exhaled a huge wave of water blasting Orochimaru backwards. That's the Sharingan for you such delicious power, a pity I can't mark him, as that blasted kick me would just kill me. Naruto charges Orochimaru slashing and smacking him with a gun by inside he carried Orochimaru, dodged the strikes by bending like a snake. Um seems Orochimaru can dance rather well this will be exciting. Don't underestimate him kid Orochimaru isn't someone who you can take lightly. I know Kurama. Just then Orochimaru started weaving hand signs. And Ara no Jin. 10,000 snake wave, Orochimaru shouted and spit out a wave of snakes towards Naruto each snake opened its mouth, revealing a long blade which extended at their rocketed toward Naruto, whose eyes widened, then Naruto thought quickly and made the horse hand sign. Pain. Nkamakyaku. Naruto unleashed a huge wave of fire towards Orochimaru and the snakes, which were obliterated by the intense flames. Anko watched in awe as Naruto pushed Orochimaru back. He's holding his own, no, beating Orochimaru. Anko thought shocked. Orochi fucking Maru. Such delicious power. Orochimaru said with glee. I'm done dancing with you. Naruto said bored and channeled chakra into his right eye. Amaterasu. Orochimaru burst into black flames and started screaming in pain, but then Orochimaru vomited out himself, completely unscathed. Damn he has the manjikum if he's anything like Itachi, then I've got to watch myself. Just then Orochimaru sensed nine chakra signatures headed his way. Shit Anbu, and it feels like Saratobi's among them I have to leave and fast. Orochimaru started laughing. Well it's been fun Naruto-kun, until next time. Orochimaru started sinking into the ground, but Naruto was faster and grabbed him with his Susanao and dragged him back. I don't think so Orochimaru I'm ending this one on my terms not yours. Amaterasu. Orochimaru took the black flames right to the face. Orochimaru cried out in pain again, but the lower part of his skin shattered and a new Orochimaru appeared then sunk into the ground. Damn he got away no mater I'll get him next time. Holy shit Gaki. Anko shouted. That was awesome. Naruto what's going on here, Suratobi shouted as he and two Anbu squads arrive. Orochimaru was here, he and I danced for a while, but in the end he got away. Naruto responded. That Gaki is amazing. Anko said. He managed to beat back Orochimaru Orochi fucking Maru. Is that true Naruto? Suratobi asks. You call me a liar. Yes it is Sandame Sama, but he'll be back. Naruto says. However I have a piece of news that is of an even greater concern Orochimaru, the Kazakiya Jindram Tenba Noel Noki are planning an invasion during the final phase of the Chunin exams. Sol Noki has grown stones and finally is willing to pay us back. It's because they think we don't have a Jinch Kriki, and without Jiraiya, we have no means of stopping a Bijk. Anko says. Let alone two. Naruto says. Do. Suratobi looks shocked. 
Yes, Shukaku and Kakuo are in these exams. Hamisama preserve us. But the thing is we do have a way to stop the Biju. Naruto flares his Sharingan, then makes the snake hand seal. Mokuten. Jokai Kountain. Wood style deep forest emergence. Then Mokuten. And Anbu said shocked. Correct I care the Nikishimi no Norway and the high no Ishii within me. You truly are Madara's grandson. Saratobi said smiling sadly. Yes I am now if you'll excuse me I have some things to attend to before I finish the exams. Naruto leapt off towards where he sensed a convergence of chakras, and Naruto also sensed a fraction of Orochimaru's chakra. What are you doing kit? Kurama asked. I'm going to go find out why ten chakra signatures have converged on one location. You sure that's a good idea? I'm bored okay. Sue me. I swear Madara's bloodlust is going to be the death of us. I just fraud a San and in one do you really think this is the true extent of my power? If I said yes I'd be an idiot. Let's go have some fun. But Sakura, Sai, Sasuke, Kin, Dosu, Lee, Zaku, Ino, Chujai, and Shikamaru. Sakura was out of chakra and exhausted, Lee was down for the count, Sasuke and Sai were out cold because of Orochimaru's attack, Ino was in possession of Kin's body, Shikamaru had paralyzed Dosu with the Kajime no Jutsu, and Zaku was laughing as he aimed his hands at Sasuke's hiding place. Let's just put an end to this and kill Sasuke as is our mission. Zaku laughed. Zankuha. Slicing sound wave, just as the attack rockets towards Sasuke a wide ethereal skeletal hand blocked the attack, and Naruto came walking into view as Susanao activated. Not again more of these weak genin just keep popping up. Zaku said exasperatedly. Zaku watch yourself this is Naruto Ichiha Madara's grandson. Dosu shouted. Whatever I'm gonna blow him away. Zaku held out his hand again, but Naruto dashed forward and punched Zaku in the stomach. Dance. Naruto Susanao rose up taking on a white version of Madara Susanao, and the two swords slash wounds into Zaku's sides, then Naruto slams the flat of the blade down on Zaku, who substituted with a log to avoid most of the damage, but Naruto wasn't done, he channeled chakra into his palm. Rikiri. And then Naruto charged Zaku. Life flashing before eyes. Zaku thought as the lightning blade got closer and closer to his heart. Just then a huge tower of dark chakra erupted into the night Naruto turned and saw it was coming from Sasuke as purple chakra flared all around him. Hit focus. Kurama roared Naruto turned his eyes back Zaku and plunged a Rikiri into him, but Zaku turned slightly and Naruto sliced through his left kidney, then collided with the ground the shockwave broke the ground, freeing Dosu from the Kajime no Jutsu. I missed. Naruto said nonchalantly. Oh well. He scrapped my kidney. Zaku clutched his side as blood poured from the wound. He didn't kill me, but at this rate I'll bleed to death. Zaku looked over at Kin. Kin get over here and heal me. I don't think so. Naruto channeled Chakra into hand again and dashed towards Zaku and plunged a Rikiri into his left lung, then Naruto pulled his hand out and weaved signs. Mokuten. Ketsum no Kai. Wood style. Tree of binding. A tree rose up and wrapped itself around Zaku holding him in place. Now for your right lung. Naruto generated another Rikiri and without hesitation plunged it into Zaku's right lung. Have fun drowning in your own blood. Naruto then turned to Kin murder in his eyes. Ino. Get out of there. Shikamaru shouted and Kin weaved the hand signs necessary. Shintenshin no Jutsu Kai. Mind transfer Jutsu release. Kin shouted then Naruto dashed forward and grabbed Kin by the throat. You're weak women. Weakness disgust me and if you were a senju you would disgust me even farther. W what air yug going t2t2t2m me. Kin choked out. R rape m me. Those who force themselves on women are scum and disgust me even more than a weak senju. No I'm just going to kill you, but don't worry I'll make it quick. Naruto formed a Rikiri in his hand. Prepare yourself for oblivion. Naruto then plunged a Rikiri into Kin's heart, killing her instantly. Naruto then turned on Dosu, then smiled darkly. W wait. Dosu said as he kneeled and pulled out his heaven scroll and an earth scroll. It's clear that I'm no match for you so I surrender our scrolls, so just let me go okay. Naruto looked on with loathing in his eyes. Sorry not happening I don't want Orochimaru learning anything more about than he already has. Naruto rushed in in and plunged Rikiri into Dosu's heart, then pulled out the two scrolls, and then he turned Ino, Shikamaru and Shinjai. Which scroll do you need? Heaven. Shikamaru responded. Here ya go. Naruto tossed the heaven scroll to Shikamaru who caught it with surprise. Why on this test we are your enemy? Do I need a reason to help a fellow comrade of Konoha? I thought you resented the village and villagers. Nope just certain people. Naruto smiled. Now get out of here. Naruto got a serious look on his face, then he turned to the unconscious form of Sasuke. Sasuke will be awakening any second, and if this chakra flowing through him, he'll be hostile to pretty much everything, so I'm going to focus that hostility on me. As if on cue Sasuke stood up a tornado of purple chakra. Sasuke started cackling like a maniac. Yes with this power I can definitely kill him. 
Sasuke burst out laughing, then he saw Naruto standing there looking at him. Naruto. Fight me. I want to test this new power with it, I'll crush you. Naruto smiled and drew his gun by. Then we dance Sasuke. Naruto rushed Sasuke and Sasuke activated his Sharingan, only to growl in fury, as Naruto didn't bother use anything other than the Achiha Interceptor Fist, something Sasuke knew. Damn that loser. How dare he use my family's Tejutsu against me. Sasuke jumped back and started weaving hand signs. Katen. Msenka no Jutsu. Higher style. Phoenix Flower Jutsu. Sasuke exhaled a huge barrage of fireballs, Naruto responded by channeling chakra through his grandfather's gun by, and a large white circular barrier rose up, and the fireballs connected with the barrier, and they exploded, but when the smoke cleared, Naruto stood there a bored expression on his face. Ghoulish little Sasuke surviving in such an unsightly manner as this. Naruto unleashed a torrent of Kai flooring Sasuke. So by all means flee run and cling to life survive in an unsightly way Naruto activated his magicum. And one day when you possess the same eyes that I do come before me again. Sasuke's look of hatred turned to pure loathing and malice. How dare you? Sasuke started weaving hand signs. Katen. Ryuka no Jutsu. Sasuke blasted Naruto with a wave of fire, but Naruto dodged and grabbed Sasuke by the throat. I'm done dancing with you. Naruto threw Sasuke into the air and then used his Susanao to punch Sasuke who went crashing into a tree, the ripped right through it and several others. Sasuke struggled to his feet pure hatred in his eyes, you want to continue dancing, but there is no strength in your steps. Naruto casted a Jinjutsu on Sasuke and he dropped to the ground as the last of his chakra left him. Ugh what just happened? Sai said as he got up scratching his head. So this is the boy that Zetsu told me works for Danzo. Naruto chuckled. Well I have a message to deliver to that bastard. Naruto dashed forward and he grabbed Sai by the throat. W what are why you doing Sai choked out. I have a message for Danzo. Naruto growled. You tell that bastard that what he's done to my family is unforgivable, and when I find him I will take great pleasure in ripping out Shisui's eye, and then I'll rip off that right arm of his. Naruto then locked eyes with Sai. And tell him the second we find him not even the laws of this will save him, nor will the Izanagi. Why yes I'll tell him. Good. Naruto threw Sai into the air and then spun around and kicked Sai sending him flying through the air, and he slammed into a tree and Sakura knocking them both out. Naruto ran towards the tower, and after about 5 minutes Kurama tapped him on the head. Wakey, wakey kit. Injutsu seems this day will be more interesting. Good grief kit you are Madara's grandson. Alright come out whoever you are. Naruto roared out. So you released my Jinjutsu the rumors about you are true, you really are an Achiha 3 aim ninja jumped down and looked at Naruto. Shall we dance? Naruto rushed forward after he asked his trademarked question, and then after a horrible 30 second beating the three aim ninja were on the ground to Naruto left to bleed to death. After a few more minutes of leaping through the forest, Naruto saw Haku and Fu standing there playing I spy. I spy with my little eye something beginning with Naruto. Haku shouted out to his friend. Sup. Naruto said as he landed in front of his teammates. Let's go we've got both scrolls. Are we the first team to make it here? No that gar guy's team arrived a few minutes before we did, but that's it. Fu said. Jimei says to watch out for Shukaku. Jimei is right we need to find Jiraiya so we can get the key to the sea lasap. Kurama said. Bacha Kurama. Naruto responded. Then he Fu and Haku walked into the tower, then they saw an empty room. Naruto saw a placket that said. If you're missing go to the library, and if you're missing then the training ground is your best bet. Oh no more riddles I hate riddles. Jimei complained. This is Kurama's shtick. We need to open the scroll my guess. Naruto said then he reached into his back pocket and took out the heaven scroll that he picked up off Akatsuchi and Kuritsuchi. Then Haku took out the earth scroll they started with. Then Haku and Naruto looked at one another and nodded, and at once they opened both scrolls Naruto saw the symbol on them. Toss the scrolls. Now. Naruto shouted and without hesitation Haku and Naruto threw the scroll, and they landed in an X formation on the ground, and in a flash of smoke Zabuza emerged. Hongrits you three have passed second stage of the Chunin exams. Zabuza said. Get in there you've got four days to relax, so get ready for the third stage. Chapter 8. The Preliminaries. Time skipped the end of the second exam. The Jown and senseis were gathered in the room and their students. First off congratulations on passing the second exams. Anko says into a microphone headset, and her voice reverberated around the room. There were 69 people who took the second exam, and 23 were able to pass. I did say that I would cut them down by half, but I was really hoping that less than 10 would be left. Well your students didn't do too badly, but my students are here as well, so their luck's run out because my students made it as well, and this part relies with ability, and we've got you far outclassed. Guy says to his eternal rival. Ah uh, did you say something? Kakashi asks. Ah. Guy grabs his head. Alright Kakashi you win this round, boy that drives me nuts when you act so cool. 
Guy glares at his rival. Ten Ten looks at her sensei. So that's Guy Sensei's eternal rival, Guy Sensei completely loses to him and looks, but Ten Ten thinks Guy Sensei is the coolest one among the other teachers. He's shinning. Lee finishes his teammate's thoughts without realizing it. Saratobi looks around at the remaining Jenin. So this many remained and most of them are new. Saratobi thinks and then looks back at his Jounin. No wonder they recommended them. We will now have an explanation of the third exam from Hokage-sama, so everyone listen well. Anko says, Saratobi steps forward and clears his throat. The third exam will begin, but before the explanation, there's one thing I want to make clear to all of you. Everyone's eyes widen slightly at Saratobi's words. It's about the true purpose of this exam. True purpose. Sakura thinks in confusion, why do we do a joint exam with the Allied Nations? We told you it was to maintain good relations with the Allied Nations and heighten the levels of ninja however, don't let those reasons deceive you, this exam so to speak is the epitome of a war between the Allied Nations. So this will be an interesting dance. Naruto thought looking around at his fellow contestants. Of the 69 that remained at the beginning of the exam now only Sasuke, Sakura, Sai, Kiba, Hinata, Shino, Ino, Shikamaru, Chinjai, Fu, Haku, himself, Kabuto, Yoroi, Misumi, Akatsuchi, Kuritsuchi, Han, Amoi, Kari, Yujito, Gara, Tamari, and Kankuro remained. What do you mean? Tenten asks, if we go back through history the allied nations now were neighboring countries that have fought each other over and over again. To avoid wasting military power, those countries decided to choose a place to fight. That was the beginning of the Chunin exams. Saratobi responds, why would we do that? We're not doing this to select Chunin. Kiba asks, yes, this exam does examine those who are worthy of the Chunin title. But on the other hand, it's also a place where ninja fight and carry their country's dignity. Country's dignity? Sakura asks, in this third exam, feudal lords and famous people from various countries who may be potential clients are invited here as guests, and feudal lords from countries with hidden villages and ninja leaders will see your battles. If there's a significant difference in power, the strong country will be flooded with jobs. If a country is seen as weak, their jobs will decrease, and at the same time, countries are able to show how their village has grown and possess excellent military power to the adjacent countries. In other words, they can put foreign pressure on them. So why do we have to fight with the risk of losing our lives? Kiba asks, the country's power is the village's power, a village's power is the ninja's power, and a ninja's true power is only born in life or death battle. This exam is also a place to show off the ninja power of one's country. Since this is an exam where you fight with your life on the line, it has a meaning and your predecessors have fought and dreamed of being in the Chunin exam because of it. But why do you say it is to promote good relations? Tenten asks, I told you at the beginning to not get it confused with that. The custom of shaving one's life and fight to maintain balance that is the good relation in the world of ninja, this is a life or death battle for your dream and village's dignity. So that's it eh? Naruto says as he nods, I don't care. Gara says. Tell us the details of this life or death exam. Then I will now begin the explanation of the third exam, but just then a ninja jumped down in a kneeling position he had short brown hair and dark markings under his eyes. Even though he was a young man, he had pronounced lines under his eyes, as well as an unexplained chronic cough that plagued him. He wore the standard Kanoha Shinobi outfit, complete with a forehead protector that he wore as a bandana, flak jacket and regular Shinobi sandals. He also carried a katana with a rectangular handguard strapped over his back. Excuse me, Hokage-sama. I, hey Jeko, the judge, will explain. Hey says. Please do. Saratobi responds. Everyone, it's nice to meet you, everyone, before the third exam there's something I want you to do Hey starts coughing a bit. Fight in some preliminary matches to see who gets to advance the third exam's main battle. Preliminary matches. Sakura wonders in confusion. Preliminary matches. What do you mean? Shikamaru shouts out. Sensei, I don't understand what you mean by preliminary matches. Sakura says with an I'm lost look on her face. Why can't we just start the third exam with the remaining examinees? Use your brain Sakura it must have been because the first and second exams were too easy, I don't know, but there are too many examinees left, according to Chunin exam regulations, we must decrease the number of participants for the third exam. Hinata snaps. Oh come on. Sakura whines, as previously mentioned by Hinata, there are many guests for the third exam, so we can't have a lot of matches. We are limited on time as well, so those who aren't feeling well. Hey, it starts coughing again. Excuse me. If anyone wants to quit after hearing the explanation please let me know, otherwise the preliminary matches will begin immediately. Immediately Kiba calls out, but we just threw the second exam. Ino whines, what a drag. Shikamaru says, what? What about my meal? Chinjai asks, oh I forgot to mention this, but you will have one-on-one -on -one matches from here on out, so please withdraw if you wish. I'm not going to withdraw. 
Sasu thinks, just then Kabuto raises his hand, what is it? Siratopi asks, I'll quit. Kabuto responds, that confirms it he's only here to gather info for the invasion. Naruto said to Kurama. But it does kit, that it does. Kurama responded, let's see. Hey, looks at his chart. You are Konoha's Yakushi Kabuto. You may leave, then. Got it. Kabuto responds and walks out. I've seen him a few times. Siratobi says to his Jounin. I believe he retired during the main exam last time, too. What is he thinking? Anko. Ibiki says. Right away. Anko responds. Yakushi Kabuto according to our data he has failed six times in a row. What about his personal history? Siratobi asks. He didn't stand out in his academy years and his grades were normal, he passed a graduation exam on his third try. After that, he did two C-rank missions and 14 D-rank ones, he doesn't have any outstanding accomplishments. I feel like there is a but what's the but? It's about before he entered the academy. Yes. Do you remember the story of the boy that was brought back from the Kikyu Pass battle? Yes, a Jounin from the medic squad took custody of an enemy's boy that was led on the battlefield, so he's that boy. Don't act on your own. On of Kabuto's teammates whispers in his ear. Did you forget Orochimaru-sama's orders? I leave it to you too. Kabuto says. Especially Yoroi san you will have no problem with your special ability. It's your chance to show what you're capable of. Since you're irritated because I got ahead of you. So you're Rachimaru sama's favorite don't get cocky, kid. Okay senpai. Kabuto walks out. May I assume there are no more people who wish to retire? Hayate asks then in that case, let's begin the preliminary matches. It will be a one-on-one -on -one match in other words it will be like real combat. Now that we have exactly 20 people, we will have 10 matches, and the winners will be able to advance to the third exam. There are no rules you will fight until the other person dies, is, knocked out or surrenders. If you don't want to die, please give up immediately. However if judge that the match is over I may stop you to prevent any unnecessary deaths. The thing that will hold your destiny hey turns to Anko who nods and turns to the back wall. Open it up. Slowly a wooden panel opens up to reveal a large computer screen. Will be this. This electronic bulletin board will randomly display the names of two fighters for each match. Without further ado, I will now display the names for the first match. The computer screen starts spinning names randomly for about 20 seconds, then the names Yoroi Akadu and Sasuke Chiha appear on the screen. Sasuke smirks at the display. Looks like I get to show off my Chiha swagger. Sasuke says arrogantly, those whose names were displayed step up. Sasuke and Yoroi walk forward. The first match of the Chunin exams will be Sasuke Chiha versus Yoroi Akadu are there any objections? No. Sasuke and Yoroi say simultaneously. Then the first match between Sasuke Chiha and Yoroi Akadu will now begin. Hayat says. Instantly Sasuke charges Yoroi and starts throwing punches and kicks at the boy who is hard pressed to dodge them. Eventually Sasuke lands a good kick and sends Yoroi flying backwards, who collides with a wall and leaves a big indent, but Yoroi gets back up and starts making hand signs, and Blue Chakra surrounds his hand, and he rushes Sasuke, thrusting his palm out Sasuke dodges the technique with easy due to his Sharingan, but a small amount of the chakra touches Sasuke's hair, and he stumbles backwards. You stole my chakra. Sasuke says eyes widening in shock. The yeah, AI did so what? Yoroi responds. That's right Sasuke Kun Yoroi has the ability to steal anyone's physical and spiritual energy, and the more he makes contact the more chakra you lose, and soon you will have to rely on the curse mark. Arachimaru thinks with glee. Yoroi starts throwing more and more punches, and while Sasuke dodges most of them some of them connect, and Sasuke's chakra is drained to the point where it becomes difficult to maintain his Sharingan. And the longer this match drags on the more of my chakra is lost, I have no choice I have to end this now. Sasu thinks in desperation looking around at his fellow Kanoha ninja. What to do? What to do? Then his eyes land on Lee. Of course. Sasuke's eyes light up with glee, then Sasuke vanishes and then reappears right in front of Yoroi and kicks him in the chin, sending him flying into the air. Then Sasuke vanishes and reappears right underneath Yoroi. Okay I admit I kind of borrowed the last move, but from here on in it's all original. Dancing Kanoha shadow. Yoroi says fearfully Sasuke throws a kick to Yoroi's right rib cage, which he blocks. Ha don't underestimate me. But Sasuke smirks and starts to flip around, but suddenly the curse mark spread over his body flips around and smashes his left fist into Yoroi's throat. Sasuke falls faster shouting out. Come back here. He throws another punch into Yoroi's stomach. I'm not done yet. Sasuke throws an axe kick into Yoroi's stomach. Shishi Renan. Lion's barrage. Yoroi collapses unconscious. Hayate walks over and kneels down and says. Well this one's had it. Then he gets back up. I'm declaring this match over as the winner of this preliminary round Sasuke Chiha advances to the finals. Sasuke gets up but collapsed in pain clutching his shoulder where the curse mark was. Just then Kakashi shunshins down and grabs Sasuke. 
Let's get that mark of yours sealed up. Kakashi and Sasuke sunshined out. Okay then let's begin with the second match. Hey 8 says the screen flashes up two names, Shino Aburam and Akatsuchi. Will both contestants step forward? Shino and Akatsuchi. If we fight then you'll lose. Shino said to Akatsuchi. In the name of Sandain Tsuchikage Samaram Tenba Nol Noki I will defeat you. Akatsuchi started weaving hand signs. Oten. Gremu no Jutsu. Earth style. Golem Jutsu, Akatsuchi spits out a rock golem at Shino who dodged it and sent a swarm of insects at Akatsuchi and they wrapped around Akatsuchi. Doten. Kajkin no Jutsu. Earth style. Weighted boulder Jutsu. The insects dropped to the ground unable to sustain themselves. Interesting you used your chakra to make my Kikiechu unable to fly or move however you've used up half your charka and the more my Kikiechu attack you the more chakra you lose even more charka sorry, but this match is over for you. Not yet. Akatsuchi started weaving hand signs when suddenly Akatsuchi clutched his arms. What the hell did you do to me? When those insects warmed your skin and you increased their weight, they had invisible nano-sized insects that attack the cells they are poisonous surrender, and I'll retract the insects if you don't you'll never live to see tomorrow. Hine I give up. Akatsuchi said shamefully. Shino walked forward and touched Akatsuchi's arm and the purple on his body retracted. Winner of the second match Shino Aburam. Hey it said. Then Shino and Akatsuchi walked back up to the balcony. In the stands Lee looks at Niji. Who is he, Niji? Lee asks. Niji walks to the left a bit and makes the hand signs hair, rat, dog, horse, dog, hair, rat, boar with nearly straightened fingers and snake with the right index finger lifted straight up. Ayakugan. Niji says as his dejutsu activates, Niji stares at Shino for a minute, then reels back in shock. What a guy I would understand if he summoned those bugs with a technique, but he lets the bugs live inside of him. Rock Lee's eyes widen in shock. What did you say? He must be a part of the clan in Kanoha that controls bugs. Guy says in a serious tone. I've heard of it before Niji says. The story of the clan that lends their body as a nest to bugs upon birth and uses them to fight they control the bugs with their minds and let the bugs battle for them. In exchange they give their own chakra as food to the bugs. Shino starts walking back towards the stairs. So he is the successor to that clan. Lee says now for the next match. Hey 8 said and the screen started spinning again and then it turned out two names, Sabaku no Kankuro and Naruto Uchiha. For the fourth match Sabaku no Kankuro and Naruto Uchiha. Crap oh crap oh crap oh crap crap crap. Kankuro swore in his head. Well then I'll dance. Naruto jumped down and looked at his opponent with a cold merciless expression. Better him than me. Shikamaru thought as he remembered how fast Naruto had decimated the sound team in seconds. Naruto held up one of his hands with five fingers extended. What's that how many seconds until you give up? Kankuro asked arrogantly. No. Naruto said calmly. That's how many moves it will take to defeat you. Naruto activated his Sharingan. Bring it. Kankuro roared and instantly Naruto vanished and when he reappeared he had his palm though Kankuro's chest. Kankuro had a shocked look on his face. Akiri. Naruto said calmly as lightning was covering his palm. Kankuro smiled and grabbed Naruto whose eyes widened slightly. Bacha. Kankuro sprung out from the wrappings on Kankuro back, reveling it to be his puppet, Crow. Let's see you kill me now that you're in Crow's grip. Daichi. At a twitch of his fingers a flurry of blades pierced Naruto from every conceivable angle. You're dead. Just then the sound of lightning caught Kankuro's ears and Naruto turned to wood and wrapped around Kankuro in the wood dragon, am I? Naruto asked laughing slightly, then Naruto walked forward and held the Rikiri right next to Kankuro's heart. H how? What you killed was a Mokuten bunch and used by Hashirama back in the day, it's well made so well made that only Jiji's and my own visual prowess could tell the difference. But how did you know that I was in the wrappings? When facing the Sharingan you really ought to hide better as these eyes see chakra as different colors. When I saw Crow had no chakra and there was a chakra source on its back, I instantly figured it out by the way that's two move it only took two moves to kill you. If you don't surrender I'll plunge this right into your heart. Okay you win. Winner by forfeit Naruto Uchiha. Hey 8 said. You can never dance with me now go rot and reflect on your weakness. Naruto walked back upstairs Guy looked at Naruto with shock. That's Kakashi's assassination jutsu where did you learn it? Guy asked. I copied it off of Kakashi back in Nami don't worry he knows I know it, he gave me permission to use it. He's right. Kakashi said as he reappeared behind Guy. He copied it off me and in exchange for letting him use it, he taught me a few katan and jutsu. That's a dangerous technique to leave in the hands of a genin Uchiha or not. Guy scolded. Naruto's no ordinary genin he's Madara's grandson, I actually feel honored that the grandson of the legendary Madara Uchiha considers me my original jutsu powerful enough to use. Kakashi I smiled. It's a very powerful technique Kakashi-san, but truly the honor is mine that a legendary shinobi such as yourself considers me worthy to wield your original jutsu. 
think nothing of it Naruto, but Sakura. Sakura was washing her face and hair to get the dirt out when she sees someone in the mirror. Be no. Sakura sneers. You sure are jumpy Sakura. I know why I mean even Sasuke-kun nearly collapsed and it's probably just because he's so great that's all that happened. Frankly I don't know what will happen to you if you compete, I think you should give up. Sakura runs her hand through her hair, then she remembered Kin's threat. I won't quit not ever. Sakura glares at a rival. Sakura walks towards the exit of the bathroom and stops right next to Ino. In fact I can't want to show off my skills to Sasuke-kun. Sakura walks out smirking. Shenro. Bring it on. Inner Sakura roars. Alright, now for the fourth match of the Chunin exams. Hey it coughs, the electronic board starts spinning names again. Well whoever it is it's going to be one of two things, epic or horribly disappointing. Naruto says. For your sake I hope it's the former. Karama said. Dot. Just then the board displays the name Sakura Hirono and Ino Yamanaka Naruto sighs. Well this is going to be one of those horribly disappointing matches, two fangirls bickering over my emo cousin. The fourth match will be between Sakura Hirono and Ino Yamanaka. Hey it says, and both girls make their way down to the arena Sakura and Ino look at one another determination burning in their eyes. Sakura's and Ino's match proceeds just as canon, but instead of Naruto shouting the encouragements it was Lee and Naruto didn't really say shit during the match. Wow was that disappointing. Yujito says. Tell me about those two wouldn't last three minutes on a real mission if their comrades lives depended on them. Kerry said. Well if you or miss two dance with me it'll prove for an exciting match. Naruto said from right behind them. Holy crap where did you come from Yujito shouted. I've been here the whole time not my fault you didn't notice me. Just then the screen started spinning again and then two more names popped up. Tamari and Tenten. It's time for the fifth match. Hey it says. The electronic board starts spinning with names again then lands on Tenten and Tamari and they both walk downstairs and stand in front each other. I am so ready after watching that last match I have to redeem the Kinoichi name. Tenten thinks. I will show the true power of Kinoichi. Tamari thinks looking at Tenten. A.N. The match proceeds as canon. Whoa and I thought Hinata was vicious. Kiba said. Now for the sixth match of the Chunin exams. Hey eight said then the computer spun again and the names Kuritsuchi and Misumi Tsurugu hey eight, looked at the board. Kuritsuchi and Misumi Tsurugu. I'm sure you know my power so I'll give you this one chance. Kuritsuchi said. Give up or your dead Kanoha scum. You're sure cocky for someone from a village who got their asses kicked by Yandame Sama. Why you? Kuritsuchi shouted infuriated. Let the sixth match begin. Kuritsuchi jumped into the air and clapped her hands together again. Jinten. Genkai Hakuri no Jutsu. Kuritsuchi shot her Jutsu at Miss Yumi and he was instantly disintegrated. Winner by fatal blow Kuritsuchi. Shortest match ever. That took what all of three seconds. Note to self, Master Jiken known in Jutsu. What about the Hiroshin your father's Jutsu? Oh that'll be fun to learn I can't wait to see the look on Lenoki's face when I pull that out in the finals. Any ideas on how you're going to get it? Wouldn't put it past dad to leave it a blood scroll I'll ask the old man after the exams. Also you might want to find Jurei we need that key. Yeah I know Kurama, but where do I find him? If I know that pervert as much as Kashina did, then he'll be at Hot Spring Go after these matches and find him. Gotcha Kurama. Naruto looked at the computer and it displayed two more names. Fu and Haku Fu and Haku looked at one another. Well this will prove to be an interesting match. Haku said to Fu that it will. Fu responded. For the seventh match, Haku Mamachi vs Fu. Hey it said. Fu and Haku walked down into the arena. I know all your tricks Fu. Haku said. But so do I Haku so don't think for a second you have the advantage. Then let's fight. Haku and Fu charged one another and started throwing punches and kicks. Eventually Haku and Fu jumped back and they both started weaving hand signs. Hyoten. Hi or you no jutsu. Ice style. Ice dragon jutsu. Haku exhaled a huge ice dragon and Fu responded with her own. Ninpoftan no Katen collaboration. Lukina Ryu Aiki. Fu used Nanabi's chakra to form the wind of the jutsu while using her own chakra to blast Haku's ice dragon to nothingness. You learned that from Naruto. Hey I thought that would be fun, plus if I'm fighting a Hyoten user like yourself, I thought a powerful Katen and jutsu would do me some good. Alright then shall we continue? Yeah. Fu and Haku charged each other and they continued fighting, then Fu jumped back and swung her hand in two blades of wind which knocked Haku backwards Haku jumped back on her feet. Fu weaved more hand signs and she started exhaling a small wave of silvery powder, then she clapped her hands together. Hijutsu. Rinpungakur no Jutsu. In a flash of silver light Haku shielded her eyes and Fu took the opportunity to stab Haku in the stomach. Sorry Haku but I win. You really think so Haku dissolved into ice. Haku's mirrors dissolved. You know Haku having an ninjutsu fight with a Jinch Kriki is considered suicide. Haku's eyes widened in shock. 
but you and I are good friends, so why don't we call this a draw? Fair enough Fu and Haku looked at Hei8. I surrender. Fu and Haku said simultaneously. I double forfeit no one advances through the seventh round. Hei8 said. Fu and Haku walked upstairs and Naruto walks over to them and smiles. You both fought well, Haku, Fu. Naruto say. Thanks Nai san Fu said smiling back at him. Yeah thanks Naruto. Haku said smiling. Just then the computer started spinning with names again, and then it landed on Kiba and Yuzuka and Yujito Nai. For the 8th match Yujito Nai vs Kiba and Yuzuka. Hei said. Alright time to show the power of the Inuzuka clan. Kiba said as he and Akamaru jumped down and Yujito followed suit and landed on her feet gracefully. You're funny kid, but don't you find this a little ironic? Yujito said as she smiled. But just because you smell like cats doesn't mean you are one. Well I'll let you figure it out. Yujito charged Kiba her nails extending as she hacked and slashed to Kiba who dodged the strikes, but a few grazed him. Kiba jumped back and made a hand sign. Ninpo. Shikyaku no jutsu. Ninja art. Four legs jutsu, Kiba got on all fours and charged Yujito slashing at her, but Yujito dodged the attacks with ease and then Akamaru came spiraling in. Barf. Akamaru barked, but Yujito bent her spin at a 90 degree angle to dodge the strike. How can a human move like that? Kiba thought shocked as he continued his attacks, but Yujito dodged by bending and twisting at angles not possible for anyone. Let me guess Matatabi. Naruto asked his partner. Matatabi. Kurama responded. Then this time the cat preys on the dog. How do you bend like that? Kiba shouted. I'm a cat at heart. Yujito said cryptically. Let's go Akamaru. Kiba threw smoke bombs at Yujito. Gitsuga. Enough. Yujito jumped into the air and weaved hand signs. Nizumi Kadama. Mouse hairball. The blue fireball shot from Yujito's mouth and exploded in Kiba and Akamaru's faces which sent them flying back and they both collapsed as they hit the wall unconscious. Winner by knockout Yujito Nai. Hei said. Yujito smiled at Kiba. Be strong I hope we can have a rematch one day. Someone falling in love. Matatabi asked smiling. No. Yujito said evenly. Though that Naruto kid's cute but I don't think it would work between us. Yeah Kurama's a stubborn one besides not even I could help you in the sack with him. Matatabi. Yujito whined. I know I'm just teasing you. Matatabi then cut off the connection to her host as the computer started spinning out names again and after a few seconds it landed on Niji and Hinata. Naruto saw Hinata look at her cousin who eyed her with deep loathing. Oh boy this won't end well. Naruto said to Kurama. Dot. I've never seen such loathing not since the elder days. Kurama responded. Naruto placed his hand on Hinata's shoulder. You best Hinata-chan, know that I am behind you all the way. Thank you Naruto-kun. Hinata said as she smiled then she jumped down and faced her cousin. Well, well, well I never thought I'd have to fight you, Hinata-sama. Niji said. I suggest you forfeit you can't hope to defeat me. Is that right? Hinata smiled. I care for you Niji Nai-san, but don't think for a second that I'll go easy on you. Hinata dropped into a jaikin stance and Niji did the same. Now let the 8th match begin. Hei 8 said and instantly Hinata and Niji charged each other, blasting each other with chakra striking at each other's chakra points. This went on for several minutes until Hinata smiled and channeled a large amount of chakra into her hands. Behold my ultimate Jaikin technique, Jiko. Smshaiken. Gentle step. Twin lion fists. When did you learn that? Niji asked then he scoffed. Never mind a failure is still a failure. Niji dashed forward and quickly shut the chakra points in Hinata's arms. Too bad for you Hinata-sama, but I don't care how powerful that technique is, it seems you need chakra to use it. That's a downside but irrelevant. Hinata vanished in a poof of smoke. Then she jumped out of the ground the Jokosum Shikin covering her hands and she struck most of the points in Niji's legs. How? Naruto-kun taught me the cage bunch and I thought I'd used it to catch you off guard and it worked. Well done Hinata-chan. Shadow clones or not I won't lose because fate has declared me the winner. Hinata and Niji charge again strike after strike they threw at each other. Eventually Niji grabbed Hinata's arm and rolled up her sleeve. It's feudal Hinata-sama from the beginning I've been targeting your Tenketsus from the beginning. What are the Tenketsu? Ino asked. There are points along the chakra network and each are only about the size of th head of a pin Kakashi responds lifting his headband revealing his Sharingan. Hitting one directly can affect chakra flow, either halting it or increasing it based how the attacker hits the point. Theoretically a used of Jayakin can control the enemy's chakra flow, but these chakra points are undetectable to even my Sharingan. But not to the Byakugan. Naruto said. Just then Niji struck the point in Hinata's lungs. I told you Hinata-sama that you can't beat me. Don't listen to him Hinata-chan. Naruto shouted. Kick his ass. I don't give up on my word because that's my nindo. Hinata said as she struggled to her feet. Die. Niji roared as he charged Hinata furry in his heart. On fuck with me. Naruto shouted channeling chakra into his hand slamming it to the ground. 
Ichiha Kenjin. Ichiha Flam Formation. A red flaming shot up around Hinata and Niji, unable to stop his attack, slammed his palm into the barrier, and it burned his hand. Hot, 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 hot. Winner by interference Niji Haika. Hey, said. Naruto jumped down and dispelled the barrier. Naruto scanned Hinata over with his Sharingan when she started coughing up blood and clutching her heart. She's going into to cardiac arrest. Medics. Naruto shouted and instantly the medic team rushed in and grabbed Hinata and rushed her to the hospital room. Niji turned to Naruto smiling. You certainly share an attachment to Hinata-sama, but seeing as you are both failures it makes sense, so why don't we Naruto instantly cut him off by blasting him with so much Kai Niji watch, as he was ripped apart by Kurama over and over again. If I ever meet you in battle I'll kill you. Naruto channeled Kurama's chakra deepening his teeth sharpening to fangs. You're a failure and always will be. Could a failure do this? Naruto activated his manjikam. Suku Naruto was cut off by Sirotobi grabbing him and covering his eyes. Naruto don't do that if you do I will disqualify you. Sirotobi said in Naruto's ear. But Jiji, I understand your rage but save it for the finals. Fine but even if I don't fight him in the finals I'll still make him suffer. Naruto turned away and walked back to the stands. How absolutely terrifying Naruto was channeling so much Kai even I saw the moment of my death could this be the work of the Kikbi. Kid I know you're pissed but being angry won't help. Kurama said. I know Kurama but I want to kill him. I know how you feel kid I mean I'd do the same thing if this happened to Kami-chan. Wait Kami-chan. You're in love the deity of life itself. Yeah I am, she visits me sometimes, but you never know because I cut you off from my body in during those visits so you don't explode. So if I get the key she won't be able to visit you anymore. No she will, but I'm actually able to separate my body from my chakra and I'd be able to visit her sometimes, but we need the key to do that. I'm working on it. The next match of the Chunin exams will now begin. The electronic board starts spinning and pops out two names, Rock Lee and Gara of the Desert, Yash. Lee shouts out. I am not last now I will show of my springtime of youth. Lee I want you to hear these wise words of wisdom from your mentor. Guy says leaning in. No one has noticed it yet, but there is something weird about that gourd that he carries. He has just noticed this I mean everyone saw this, and anyone who can sense chakra can detect something is amiss with his chakra. Karama face palms. Hey Atlas T is trying. Naruto says half-heartedly. Lee jumps down and Gara shunshins down and faces Lee. Kankuro walks over to Naruto from the other side of the arena. How come you're all by yourself and not with your buds? Kankuro asks, says the puppet user who left his buds to be over here. Naruto responds Kankuro deadpans for a split second. Well he got me there. Kankuro thinks. I'm curious about that Niji, something about his match suggests he was holding back. Just shut up. Naruto said. I'm pissed as it is if you anger me anymore I'll kill you. Kankuro wisely shut up and turned to the match. Impatient are we. Lee says and he opens his fist to reveal Gara's cork for his sand gourd, which had launched from his gourd a couple of seconds ago, then he lets it drop to the floor. Gara doesn't respond and he just stares at Lee. All right when you're ready. Begin. Hey, says Lee charges and takes a crack at him calling out, I know has sank. Gara does nothing as the sand moves to block the first kick and repels him onto his butt. Lee sees the sand coming at him he rolls back springs up on his hands and back flips once and skids back to where he started on the floor. Gara does nothing as the sand returns to the gourd. Even as fast as Lee is he can't get anywhere near him. Sasuke says in shock. The sand, he's using it as a shield. Naruto looks at Kankuro. He isn't doing it the sand is doing it of its own accord. That's why Gara's never been injured no one's been able to get at him, no one's even been able to touch him. Well that's interesting. Naruto thought, so sand manipulating jutsu huh, that won't be easy getting around, but nothing ventured anything gained. Lee charges again takes another try with four kicks and four punches, but Gara's sand blocks all of them. Then sand comes at him again this time he draws a kunai from his holster and parries the sand via cutting into it, then he notices the sand regrouping he backs away, jumps up launches a couple shuriken, Gara still isn't moving, as the sand gathers to form a circle around him. Blasted, he didn't even budge, and how in Kami's name is he doing that he isn't even moving a muscle. I hope that isn't all to your little show, after all it's not a show if there isn't enough blood. Lee sees the sand coming towards him he jumps to dodge, but he misjudges the sand and it catches his ankle. Gara does nothing as the sand slams Lee against a wall and as the sand charges him. Lee recovers and dodges the sand and tries again to nail Gara. I don't get it. Sakura says. He is only using Tejutsu why doesn't he doesn't get some distance and use Ninjutsu. Yes that would be a good idea that is if he had any. Guy says. Lee has no ninjutsu or jinjutsu skills at all. You're kidding. Oh that's nothing you should have seen him when we first met no talent whatsoever. Really? I can't believe it. 
Lee starts doing backflips to avoid the sand's assault, but falls on his side because the sand shoots beneath his feet, and Gara does nothing again as his sand moves in for the kill. Sakura and Ino as well as several other flinch as they think Gara killed Lee. It's over. Shikamaru flinches, but then everyone notices that Lee dodged that by one cannonball flip onto the big statue hand sign for the ram. Gara and Lee glare at one another. A ninja who can neither do ninjutsu or jinjutsu is certainly a rarity. Guy says. Lee has only his tojutsu to rely on, so might consider that a disadvantage, but that's what makes him a winner. All right Lee drop them. But, sensei you stated that was only as a last resort if the lives of precious people are at stake. Lee responds, that's true I did, and normally I'd stand fast to that, but this is an exception. Lee looks shocked. Really really Guy nods he moves his orange leg warmers up to reveal his leg weights. How are those Eno asks, how old fashioned? Shikamaru says. Leg weights. Basic training equipment. Kakashi thinks looking at Guy in mild curiosity. This ought to be good. Naruto says. More like totally lame. Kankuro says. Lee takes his weights off. Ah that is better now I will be able to move freely. Lee says then he drops the weights. Come on you really think that you'll be able to get around Gara's sand defenses just by dropping a couple of pounds of weight. Tamari thinks smugly. That's when Lee's weights collide with the ground, causing a huge explosion of debris. Oh. My. God. Sakura thinks the overly and I'm reaction shot face. Naruto widens an eye at the display. So he wears weights too interesting. Naruto thinks impressed. Ah you are too much. Kakashi thinks grabbing his mask. Alright. Guy calls out to his student. Now go. Yes sir. Lee calls out A and everything between point A. The dropping of the weights and the point B. After the second direct hit is cannon to the anime. Just then everyone in the room notices Gara's face is falling off. The ink is himself in sand, things must be bad I haven't seen that look on his face for a long time. Kenkuro thinks notes the crazed look on Gara's face. I knew it I sensed him getting more and more unstable as the Chunin exams progressed. Tamari starts panicking, as I thought his inner demon has been awakened. Baki thinks. Naruto observes the reaction of Gara and decides to play dumb for a couple minutes. What the all those hits did any of them get through? Naruto asks. Nope it's a rough equivalent of wearing a suit of armor. Kenkuro responds. Is it possible to consider Gara's sand armor to be a rough equivalent of the Susanao? Naruto asks Kurama. That can be the case but it is safe to assume that it takes a lot of chakra to keep that armor up, so it's an insult to call it that. Now normally the shifting clouds of sand, that is the sand shield, would be enough to protect him, but in the event the shield is penetrated the sand can be worn like armor. Kenkuro continues, and just when things were looking up for Lee. Naruto notes sadly. That's proof that Gara is feeling the pressure he would never have resorted to the armor otherwise. Tamari thinks then looks at Lee. This Lee is good no doubt about it, but that's not the same as winning it may not be as easy as we thought, but the outcome's a given, Gara can't lose. But Lee and Gara, well is that all? Gara asks, not good even with my high speed those sand themed defenses are nearly impossible to bypass, my best chance now is to get him airborne and away from the sand and pummel him from above with the Amit range. Primary Lotus, Lee thinks and his eye twinkles, then he glances at Guy who nods and Lee undoes his arm bandages to the point they were at his knees. Get ready. Lee employs his high speed and runs around Gara multiple times in a clockwise circle. That's right Lee good work that flimsy Suna no Tate won't protect him from your high speed Amit range. Guy thinks, what are you waiting for? Very well, you asked for it. Lee drops and lands a kick to Gara's chin he doesn't go high due to the weight of the gourd. He's not floating. Sakura notes remembering when Sasuke was almost on the receiving end of that attack. Try this. Lee proceeds to get him higher via more kicks. What an incredible series of kicks. Kakashi thinks. Even an ordinary Amit range puts an enormous strain on the body, let alone this, you've got to finish it now Lee. Guy clamps his hands to pray. Just then Gara noticed Lee wincing in pain, and Gara's skin cracked a bit more, Kakashi and Naruto's eyes widen slightly. Lee's bandages wrap around Gara. now take this. Lee calls out they spin round and round until they are blurs. Amit wrench. Then comes the impact, the ground beneath Gara is fractured, cracked and destroyed, Lee lands on the ground kneeling and breathing hard. It is over I got him. Right on Lee. Guy calls out. Amazing he won. Kiba says. No, I don't believe it. Kenkuro says in horror. You did it. Sakura shouts. Way to go Lee. Is he? That guy isn't dead is he? Shikamaru asks, hey it walks over to Gara to see if he was still alive. Just then the Gara's skin starts collapsing into his head and Gara starts to dissolve into sand, Lee looks in shock as Gara decomposes. What? Lee asks, what the? Sakura calls out then Gara turns to sand. An empty shell. Sakura calls, but how when did he do it? Guy asks, it was when you closed your eyes to pray. Kakashi responds. 
At that moment Lee closed his eyes too, because of the pain, that's when he did it. No that's was too easy and if Gar is anything like his old man. Naruto shakes his head, then he notices Gara's sand substitution. Yep too easy. But Lee and Gara. Lee notices Gara collapsing in on himself partial bugs eyed what Gara reforms behind Lee, laughing evilly with an evil look on his face, Gara unleash wave after wave of sand style attacks, while Lee is barely scraping by with dodging, blocking his attack. Flashback, I remembers when he first laid eyes on Lee when he was in the academy. But Lee and Gara. Gara unleashes an attack which hits him like a punch to an already injured leg. But you didn't quit you kept practicing. Guy thinks, flashback, memory of Guy observing Lee train like the wind. Back to reality, you trained like there was no tomorrow until, flashback, memory of Guy when he was getting acquainted with his new gen and team, and hearing Lee's goal and Niji snickering at what he said as he reminds him of Naruto's attitude toward training. Back to reality, with Lee and Gara. Lee, having recovered enough to able to move without the pain from ripping through him, is running around dodging Gara's sand attacks. Why doesn't Lee give up? It's just rotten luck that Gara was this guy's matchup, he should quit while he still can breathe. Kankuro says, Lee. Niji thinks looking at him. Flashback, Niji beating the stuffing out Lee via gentle fist, but partially curious why Lee is so stubborn to keep fighting despite him getting knocked on his butt so many times, ending with the words of the following nature. Try as many times as you like, but you can't beat me because you are a failure. Back to reality, whether what Niji and Tenten had said to you that day was true or not, you refused to listen and you never gave up. Guy thinks, but Lee and Gara. Gara nails Lee with a sand attack that knocks him on Lee's stomach, as he looks as menacing as ever, taking some joy in toying with him, Lee quickly gets up with his hand shaped as bare claws, forearms crossed, blocking his face minus his eyes, still partially reeling from the primary Amit range, after shock still apparent by his light paced panting. Gara starts laughing evilly. A lot of good that'll do ya. Gara says, back upstairs, poor kid Gara will just continue to toy with him till he begs for mercy. Kankuro says, well my friend from Suna, your buddy is gonna be in for a long match, that's mainly because Lee literally doesn't know how to give up. Guy responds, but Lee and Gara. Gara launched one attack as knocks him on his stomach, and another attack with an identical effect to a punch to an already injured leg, equaling screaming in pain. Back upstairs, Lee will press on long after a point where someone else would have given up. Flashback, Guy's memory of Lee making a mistake during his training regiment and chatting with him telling that it is true about him being different, no talent for ninjutsu or jinjutsu, and his tojutsu needs refinement, mentions to Lee about him having a gift niji is without one, not flashy like a tojutsu, but more important and despite his encouraging words, Lee begins to doubt himself because he's 0 for 24 in matches against niji, and he starts losing heart, and the memory switches to a nighttime scene on the rock after Guy says. You're right all the effort is pointless unless you believe in yourself. And after sharing a couple fact about his past with Lee, and gives Lee new resolve towards his goal of becoming a splendid ninja that can only use tojutsu. But Lee and Gara, Lee pants forearms crossed blocking position, notices Guy smiling at him. Guy sensei, thank you. Lee thinks and smiles and gets into his signature stance. Gara in suspicion launches an attack Lee dodges it at the high speeds he was using before. Back upstairs, Naruto smiles. Looks like Lee got his second wind wouldn't you agree? Naruto says to Kurama. Kids got guts I'll give him that. Kurama says. However he's gone off the deep end Shukaku is the weakest of us all, but he is beyond human measurements. But Lee and Gara, Lee stands at his ready position. I'll make you proud sensei, by simply doing the following follow my path to end, forge ahead and be the ninja I know I can be. Lee thinks in determination. Lee's smiling he's running for his life, but he is still smiling. Sakura says confused. Yes but now it's Gara's turn to run. Guy responds. What? Sakura looks at Guy. The Kanoha village lotus blooms twice. Guy smiles. I've heard that somewhere before, Yali told me that. No, Guy you didn't. Kakashi says in fear. Yes Kakashi I did. Guy responds. So that Jenin, that boy, is able to open the eight inner gates and use the Urarenge. Hidden lotus, Urarenge. Niji thinks confused. That's correct. Well if that isn't the most Kakashi growled then sighed. Alright so how many gates is he able to open now? Five gates. Okay what are these eight inner gates you're talking about in the Ura range? The eight gates are like valves or chakra limiters that must be opened if one is to release the Ura range. I'm still not following. Kakashi lifts his headband revealing his Sharingan. There are gates along the chakra network located at those points where the chakra is most heavily concentrated starting at the head they are Kaimon gate of opening, Kaimon, the gate of rest, Saimon, gate of life, Saimon, gate of pain, Toman, gate of limit, Kaimon, gate of view, Kaimon, gate of wonder, and Shimon, gate of death, these are what are known as the eight inner gates. Their purpose is to limit the flow of chakra throughout the body, but the Amit Renge puts tremendous strain on these limiters, eventually forcing the gates open, this releases the restraints on the chakra, the result being that a person's strength can be increased tenfold or more. 
Kakashi explains. The primary Amit range opens only the first gate came in releasing the brain's restraints on the muscles, allowing a person to bring forth its body strength to its fullest. You've seen the results. And the Yura range? Sakura asks. At the second gate, Kaiman, one strength is increased farther, and at the third gate, Saman, one enters the Yura range. Wait a minute just the primary Amit range nearly destroyed Lee, he could barely move what's going to happen to him if he takes it farther. Exactly. Kakashi responds. By opening all eight gates you could obtain power beyond even the Hokages the only drawback is. Kakashi pauses for dramatic effect. You die. Sakura's eyes widen in fear. I don't know what this boy means to you, but I shouldn't have to tell you that we never bring our personal feelings into this. I wouldn't have thought you were capable of this. You have no right, you know nothing about him, nothing at all. That boy has something important and he's determined to prove it even at the cost of his life, and I am determined to help him not for his sake, but because that is a goal worth reaching. Flashback, memory of Guy and Lee before Guy teaches him the Ura range, and the memory ends at. You can only use this technique under one very strict condition, and that condition is. End of flashback, but Lee and Gara, and that condition is. Lee thinks as his fingers curled and arms crossed. Gara notices a change in Lee. I don't know what you're up to, but this match is over for you. I couldn't agree more, because this is match is over one way or another. Lee responds Nichi, Sasuke, and Naruto. Gara notices the change increasing, but is clueless as per how to handle it, I refuse to be the one to lose here, I ask you guy sensei please let this work it is now or never. He starts radiating chakra, and the rushing blood starts turning his visible skin red. Lee with guy in his thought voice both Lee and guys are used. To protect and maintain one's own ninja way. Then Lee roars out. The third gate. Same and open. As the onlookers from above observe the match look on at the genin whose chakra is now surging through him, some confused as per what's happening. Gara look him. The third gate is open now begins the Ura range. Kakashi said. Yeah you'd like that wouldn't you, Guy said slightly irritated at the cycloptic ninja Kakashi only looking at him in response. The fourth gate, showman open. Lee said. Okay to open gates through sheer effort is no small feat, it's pretty safe to have him classified as a genius. Kakashi said partially impressed, after a while of adapting to the new surge of power, Lee nearly crouched before moving, no sooner than when he moved the ground exploded from the force of Lee's movements, and not three-fourths of a second later Lee's foot meets Gara's chin, but unlike last time Lee's kick created an explosion of dust, stone, and partial bits of sand. All the onlookers had to start shielding their eyes. Well this speed can be on par with Minato-sensei, only difference a lot quieter. Kakashi said as he picked a little speck out of his ear. Lee notices the Suna no Yoroi cracking. Hiss that sand armor goodbye as I tear it off you. Lee says all the while moving at high speeds. For the duration of the match Lee was batting Gara around like a rag doll, all the while not letting him touch the ground. As tough as my armor is it's can't hold up against this pounding. Gara said as he watched his armor crumble. One more and we're done here Lee said then he calls out. The fifth gate, Toman. Open. He lets gravity bring him down to Gara. Lee passes a quick 1 16th second glance at Niji then thinks. Well Niji, count yourself lucky because you have a preview of what I have in store for you. And he proceeds to shoot towards Gara, but surprises Gara again when he pulls a speed-themed vanishing trick, nailing Gara in the gut, and just when the surprise is gone, Lee had attached his bandage wrapping to Gara's belt, and he pulls him as the sand drops to try and surround him. That's the beauty of the Yura range, since the user is employing Tijutsu at speed, so blinding any defenses is render as useless as a dust bunny that nothing I've seen can block or defend against it, not even Niji or Gara's Suna no Tate. Guy thinks watching his student attack. Now to end it. Lee said as he pulls Gara towards him while throwing a punch and kick at Gara, and then he roars out. Yura range. Lee roars in pain as the negative effects of the Yura range is felt in Lee's right arm and leg. An. The part where Lee's arm and leg is crushed and is saved by Guy is canon to the story. Gara gets up with a bored look on his face. I'm done. He's done. Sakura asked. But the match was over for Lee the moment Guy interfered. The winner is Hei. Then Hei stopped as he and everyone else saw Lee standing on his feet, his left arm and leg trembling. Lee that's enough Guy said walking over to him. And in any case you're in no condition to Guy's eyes widen and shocked, then he started crying. Lee, oh Lee, what have I done? Everyone looks in shock to see Lee is standing even while unconscious. Look at you not even conscious and still determined to show the world what you can do. Guy pulls Lee into a hug. He's out cold nothing keeping him up but sheer willpower. Kakashi takes his forehead protector and covered his Sharingan. You've already proven it Lee. You are a splendid ninja. The winner is Gara. Hey, said. I knew he couldn't beat Gara. Tamari said. Still it was a lot tougher match than we thought. Kankuro thought. Naruto jumped down, and then he looked at Gar cold malice in his eyes. It should be if you and I fight in the finals I'll avenge Lee's pain tenfold. 
You might be strong Ichibi, but you are nothing compared to the Kikbi. Naruto said unleashing a torrent of focused Kai. I'll kill you. Shukaku shouted in a blind fury. Shut up Shukaku you're nothing compared to me I have 8 more tails than you. Kurama said walking up from his nap. Rikudo no Jiji told us that one day we would learn true power I know for a fact that this boy is the one Jiji was talking about. He is Madara's grandson his is the true power among the four of us. Naruto worked and worked shedding blood sweat and tears to earn his power. I demand I guarantee you and that Gara kid will get your asses kicked. That is what annoys me the most about you brother. You think that just because I have less tails than you I'm weaker. You kind of are. Kurama said nonchalantly. Gara, kill them. Gara goes to unleash his sand when Naruto disappears in a murder of crows and then reappears in the stands. Calm yourself Gara. when we dance I assure you it will be one to remember. Naruto says then Gara shunshins back up to the stands and then the computer starts generating names Kari and Amoy for the 10th match Kari vs Amoy. Hey it said and then Amoy and Kori walk down the stairs and face one another. Well this is gonna be fun. Naruto smiled to himself. Dukumo Shinobi from the looks of things both experts of Kenjutsu this ought to be good. Kurama nodded aligning his sight with Naruto's to watch the match. Begin. Hey it said. Without hesitation Kari and Amoy drew their blades and charged. Kari and Amoy struck blow after blow neither of them yielding for a second. After two minutes of not landing a blow Kari jumped back and so did Amoy. Gumorika Matajiri. Cloud style. Front beheading strike, Kari and Amoy shouted and they charged each other blades clashing again and again. Then Amoy back up and cried out to most of Kanoha's shock. Mikazuki no Mai. Dance of the Crescent Moon. Three Amwa charged Kari and she looked frantically between the three of them. Gumorik Kinjiri. Cloud style. Flame beheading, Kari swung around her blade around burning the Amoy that were surrounding her. The Amoy on the left disappeared in log. Gumorik Damashajiri. Cloud style. Deception beheading, shit. Kari blocked the blade only for Amoy to appear behind her and hold the blade up to her throat. I win Kari. Ugh fine. I give up. Kari shouted. Winner Amoy of Kumo. Hey it said. You need to learn to think things through. Amoy said as he smiled and sheathed his blade. But if you did then you might kill me and then that would start a civil war as some would call for your execution while others wouldn't and then Kari cut him off by slamming her foot into Amoy's balls. Why? Amoy asked in a high pitched voice. To shut you up. Amoy limped back to the stands while Kari jumped back up to the stands. Now for the final match Han and Chimjai Akimichi. Hey it said and then Han and Chimjai walked down and faced each other. Begin. Chimjai makes some hand signs and shouted out. I can no jutsu. Expansion jutsu, Chimjai expanded to twice his size and then he rolled up into a ball. Nikita and Sensha. Human boulder, Chimjai shot towards Han who channeled chakra into his armor and it exploded in a cloud of steam. Hung Kayaku. Eruption kick, Han roared and the steam coming from his back shot him towards Chimjai and the force of the explosion of steam and Han's physical prowess sent Chimjai blasting backward and he collided with the wall. When the dust cleared Chimjai's jutsu were dispelled and Chimjai had swills in the size. Winner by knockout Han. Whoa that go be strong. Ujito thought. Hakuo was always strong, but this is ridiculous. Matatabi responded. She's got nothing on me. Kurama said. Will you shut up Kurama and let me enjoy my pup's victory? Kakuo complained. Yeah Kurama, give Kakuo some form of praise you might be the oldest of us all, but that doesn't give you the right to be about it. Jamei said scolding. Fine. Nice work Kakuo you've trained your jinch cricky well. Kurama said rolling his eyes. Play nice Kurama. Naruto said. Oh shut up. Does Naruto need to subjugate a bitch? You do and I'll cut you off from all of my chakra for M-O-N-T-H. Kurama shouted. Lighten up Kurama I was only joking. Will all the finalists come down the floor? Hayate's voice called Naruto out of his argument with Kurama. Niji, Naruto, Gara, Sasuke, Kuritsuchi, Han, Tamari, Shino, Shikamaru, Yujito, and Amoy walked down and faced Hayate. Hayate pulled out a small box placed 11 slips of paper in, then he shook up the box and handed it to finalists. Pick a number that number will determine who you face in the finals. Naruto walked forward and rummaged in the box and pulled out a slip of paper. I got one, fitting. Naruto says. I got three. Gara says bored. I got six. Shino says. I got two. Niji says. Naruto's eyes widen in glee and starts laughing like a manic, imagine Alucard's laugh after he killed Rip Van Winkle, and Niji started sweating bullets at Naruto's reaction. This is a drag, but I got seven. Shikamaru says. I got four. Sasuke says. I got five. Kuritsuchi says. I got eight. Tamari said. I got nine. Amoy said. I got ten. Han said. I've got eleven. Yujito said. 
Okay, the matchups will be Naruto Uzumaki vs. Niji Haikta, Sasuke Chiha vs. Abaku no Gara, Shino Aburam vs. Kuritsuchi, and Amoy vs. Han and Yujito will fight the winner of Han and Amoy's fight. Hey, says, and then the Jounin Sensei and Suratobi walk down into the arena and Suratobi steps forward. Congratulations to the winning Gen and now we will meet in a month's time for the finals. Suratobi said. Why a month? Naruto asks. The gain new abilities as well as wait for the daimyo and other important clientele to arrive. Everyone started walking out, but as Naruto started walking Suratobi placed a hand on his shoulder. Naruto I know you're upset, but I don't want you killing anyone please. Upset doesn't really scratch the surface believe me when Niji and I fight it'll make the ass whoopings, I'm sure you have your genin team look like a spanking, I'm going to tear down everything he believes and I will break him, and then when he's lost everything he believed in, then I will kill him, or I might not the thought of Niji losing everything he believed in, and having to live with that. Halona sounds a lot more exciting and more of a fitting punishment. Speaking of my genin team Jiraiya is in town I'm sure you'll want to pay him a visit, and when you do he'll be by the hot springs. Oh and that reminds me can I have my dad's Hiroshin scrolls I'm sure he left them in your possession. Yes yeah, sure come with me to my office. Saratobi and Naruto walk towards his office and when they walked in Saratobi looked at his secretary. Send messages to the Tsuchikage, Reikage and Kazukiage, informing them that some of their genin made it to the finals. Yes, Hokage-sama. The secretary responds and she starts writing up the letters as Naruto follows Saratobi into the office. And believe us. Saratobi says, yes sir. Came three replies to his command, and three Anbu left the room. Now why don't I Saratobi starts reaching for the vault hidden behind Minato's face when Naruto dashed forward and grabbed at the bookcase. You think you can hide from me? Naruto asked. Of course you can't my Sharingan can see you, Hokage-sama gave you an order, but of course you don't listen to him do you? You only obey Danzo don't you? You won't get a word out of me demon brat came a choked reply. Oh but I will Tsukiyomi. Moon Reader, Tsukiyomi World, and Anbu was strapped to a cross in a reverse colored world, while Naruto stood before the man a sword in his hand. For the next 72 hours I will stab you over and over. Naruto said as he thrust the sword into the root Anbu's gut. The root Anbu cried out in pain as pain wrenched in his gut as the swords pierced him over and over. This isn't real. He screamed screamed at him. Don't think it's merely an illusion, your pain is no illusion it's as real as any felt in reality, and as for getting in trouble who will believe you, here in Tsukiyomi time and space, even physical mass I control them all. Naruto responds thrusting the swords into the root Anbu's gut, again digging the blade into his stomach, increasing the pain as the one next to him does the same. How much time has passed? How long have I been here? 71, hours, 59 minutes and 59 seconds to go. Impossible only a single second has passed. I told you, time and space, even physical mass I control them all. He and his clones thrust the swords piercing everywhere, causing me to scream in pain. The sky swirled again. When Naruto ended his jutsu the root Anbu dropped to the ground, brain dead. Naruto what did you do? This man was a member of Danzo's route who he sent to spy on you and coordinate movements based on your own, but even my kidnapping caught him off guard because I simple vanished, not even the spy here could tell him more but now's brain dead, but I suggest you were this. Naruto took out a small piece of paper and wrote the kanji for detect on it. This seal will detect any other seals in the immediate area, and all of Danzo's route have a special seal on their tongues that prevents them from telling anyone about Danzo's plans, but Tsukiyomi plus my own sealing prowess loosened his lips and I got a lot of info off this one, but now you'll be able to detect Danzo's route no matter how well they hide. Thank you Naruto you kill a spy that could have been detrimental to our counter-invasion plan. All in a day's work Hokage-sama. Naruto bowed then handed Saratobi the tag and he applied it to the back of his neck. Instantly Saratobi fell the presence of three seals, but he was calm. Now for your inheritance. Saratobi opened Minato's portrait and pulled out a scroll with the words Kairoi Seng, then he pulled out another scroll with the words. Aki no shiny. Ah san tu san Naruto said sadly as he held the scrolls in his hands. I know it's ad Naruto, but they died heroes. I know Jiji. I'm gonna go find Jiraiya and he's gonna help me train in the Hiroshin. Saratobi laughed. Good luck getting him to do that, no even Jiraiya could master that technique, but I could send you the Genma squad and they can help you. Wait there are others who know my father's jutsu. Yes but it takes all three of them to preform it, but I'm sure given enough practice and time. I know but I want to have it mastered by the finals. Saratobi looked at Naruto shocked. Well if you can do that I'll hand you the hat right after your match. Saratobi said. I'll hold you to that Jiji. Naruto walked out of the office and towards the hot springs. What if Naruto has Madara's eyes tune in exams, thanks for watching my video till the end if you enjoy this content, then do consider subscribing to my channel, and leave a like if you guys need the next part, comment down, and thanks for watching the video and see you guys in the next video.